Now dear student, we are going to discuss this question, question number 2.14 and in this question it is given to you two small sphere carrying charges 1.5 microcoulomb and 2.5 microcoulomb are located uh, 30 centimeter apart. We have to find potential and electric field number A at the midpoint of the line joining the two charges second part that is also given to you. Clear? So now first we will try to analyze a given situation and then we will solve this question. Clear? So now concentrate on a screen. Now listen carefully. In this question it is given two tiny sphere. It means we can assume this sphere as a point charges. Clear? So it is carrying charges 1.5 microcoulomb and 2.5 microcoulomb. Clear? So let's suppose here we have this charge or let's suppose I am drawing here. Let's suppose this is a small sphere. Let's suppose this is also small sphere. Clear? Charge value is given. So let's suppose Q1. This is given to you 1.5 microcoulomb. Clear? And value of Q2. This is given to you 2.5 microcoulomb. Clear to everyone? Now, it is located 30 centimeter apart. Means value between distance between two charges is given to you 30 centimeter clear to everyone now we have to find potential and electric field means our objective here is to calculate potential as well as electric field clear so potential and electric field at the midpoint of line joining the two charges clear so if we talk about part a clear now we can say let's suppose this is midpoint let's suppose this point is p clear from here you can see we have distance 15 centimeter and this distance is also 15 centimeter clear now our objective here is to calculate value of uh, we can say electric potential and electric field at point p clear so first we find electric potential at point p clear so electric potential at point p this is given by k q by r clear so we can write like this k q1 divided by r because distance from each charge or at the point P, this is same, clear? So KQ by R plus, we can write like this, this is KQ2 by R2 or we can say same because value of R is same. So we can take here common K by R, this is Q1 plus Q2, clear? Now we know value of Q, uh, value of K we have 9 into 10 to the power 9 and value of R, value of R is given to you 15 centimeter means we can write like this 15 into 10 to the power minus 2 clear value of q1 and q2 q1 value is given 1.5 plus q2 value we have 2.5 and this is given in micro coulomb so that's that's why we can multiply it with 10 to the power minus 6 clear so now we can write like this 9 by 15 into 10 to the power 11 then we can say 1.5 plus 2.5 this is equal to 4 so 4 multiply 10 to the power minus 6 clear to everyone so from here you can say electric potential at point p that is a midpoint of on the line joining two charges this is given by v equal to 9 by 15 into we can say 10 to the power 4 into uh, 10 to the power 5 clear 10 to the power 5 multiply we can say 4 clear so this is equal to we can say this is 3, this is 5. So we can write like this 12 by 5 into 10 to the power 5 volt. Clear to everyone? So we can say potential at point P. This is given by 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 volt. Clear to you? So like this, you can calculate value of uh, electric potential at point P. Clear to everyone? Now we are going to discuss here value of electric field at point P. Clear? So now we can say both are positive charges. So definitely we can say direction of electric field at point P due to one. We can say in this direction even. Yes. And we can say this is E2. Now we can say distance is same, but this charge is having larger magnitude. It means we can say we will find net electric field in the leftward direction. Clear to everyone. So now we can write like this E net. E net. This value is given by, we can say, E2 minus E1, clear? You can also write this value in equation term, but I am just first finding direction in a logical sense. 
then I am writing here all the values clear so E2 minus E1 is a net electric field so value of E2 we can say E2 is given by KQ2 divided by R square clear minus we can write like this KQ1 over R square clear so from here we can say value of K by R square we can take it common Q2 minus Q1 clear value of K value of K we have 9 into 10 to the power 9 divide by r square r square value is given to you 15 centimeter so we can say 15 into 10 to the power minus 2 whole square clear value of q2 minus q1 q2 is given 2.5 so 2.5 minus 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 6 clear to everyone so from here we can write like this value of e net value of e net this is given by we can see 9 divided by 15 into 15 into clear we can see this is 10 to the power minus 4 and this is what 10 to the power 9 clear to you yes now we can say this is 1 into 10 to the power minus 6 clear from here you can see this is 10 to the power minus 2 and this one is 7 so we can see 9 into 15 into 15 into 10 to the power 7 clear to you and value we will get in Newton per Coulomb so this will be value of net electric field at point P clear so now you can solve it uh, we can say this is 3 we can say this is 5 this is also 5 clear so we can write like this 1 by 25 into 100 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per Coulomb clear from here you can say this value is equal to 4 clear so we can say 4 into 10 to the power 5 this is Newton per Coulomb clear to everyone so this is value of net electric field at point P and this point P is the midpoint on on the line joining Q1 and Q2 clear to everyone yes or no yes now we are going to discuss part number second part number second in part number second it is given we have to find electric potential and electric capacity uh, electric potential and electric field at a point 10 cm from midpoint in a plane normal to the line passing through midpoint clear so let us try to understand given situation yes now we can say let's suppose again i am assuming here this is a charge and let's suppose this is a point charge value is given 1.5 micro coulomb so this is 1.5 micro coulomb this value we have q2 this is 2.5 micro coulomb clear now we know this is a midpoint let's suppose this is midpoint and we are assuming here uh, let's suppose this is midpoint i am indicating by o clear or let's suppose i am saying this is p no problem now let's suppose here we have at any point o and this point is lying 10 centimeter from midpoint so this is 10 centimeter distance clear to you this distance we have 15 centimeter this one is also 15 centimeter clear now our objective is to calculate electric field and electric potential clear so now you can say electric field is a electric field is a scalar quantity so directly we can see if we find here this distance and if we find this distance we can easily calculate value of electric potential so now we can see this is what this 10 centimeter and 15 centimeter are perpendicular to each other so we can say we can write like this this value is given by 10 square plus 15 square clear so from here we can say value of r this is given by 100 plus 225 clear so we can say this is equal to 325 clear now we know under root of 334 is approximately 18 centim uh, three under root of 334 we 324 we have 18 centimeter clear so we can write like this this is approximately equal to 18 centimeter clear to everyone now we can calculate electric field uh, uh, we can calculate first electric potential at point o due to charge q1 and q2 clear so we can write like this v naught this is given by v1 plus v2 clear value of v1 value of v1 is given by k q1 divided by we can see this is 18 centimeter i am just writing like this clear now i can write like this kq2 divided by this is also 18 centimeter 
Yes or no? Clear? This value is given 18 centimeter. This is also 18 centimeter. So we can write like this k upon 18 into 10 to the power minus 2 and this is q1 plus q2. Clear to everyone? So now we can say value of k. We have 9 into 10 to the power 9. 18 into 10 to the power minus 2. q1 plus q2. q1 plus q2 is given 1.5 plus 4. So we can say uh, 1.5 plus 2.5. This is 4. Clear? So 4 into 10 to the power minus 6. Clear to everyone? So now we can say this is what 10 to the power minus 4. Clear? We can say this is 2. This is 9. 9 and 9 this is cancelled out. Clear to everyone? So from here we can find value of electric pot, uh, electric potential at point O. This is given by 2 into 10 to the power 5. So 2 into 10 to the power 5 volt. Clear to everyone? Clear? Yes. Now we have to find value of electric field at point O. Clear? So if we are talking about electric field, it means electric field is a vector quantity and we have to take care of the direction also. Clear? So now you can say due to one direction of electric field in this direction. This one. Clear? And this is the direction of E1. Clear? From here you can say this is direction of we can say E2. Clear? Now we can say value of E1 and E2 we can calculate. E1 is given by KQ by R square. Clear? KQ by R square. Clear? So we can write like this. K value we have 9. Uh, first I am writing like this. K upon R square is the same. Either we are talking about E1 and E2 and value of Q1 we have 1.5 micro coulomb. Clear? Value of E2 this is KQ upon R square. This is Q1 and this is Q2. Clear? From here you can say this is K upon R square value of Q2. Value of Q2 is given by this is 2.5 micro coulomb. Clear to you? Yes. So now our objective here is to calculate value of electric field. Clear? So now we can say first of all we should know here what is angle between these two vectors. Yes or no? So for that one we can calculate this angle. Clear? Yes or no? So let's suppose we can say this is theta, this is theta. Clear? So can we calculate this value of theta? Yes. So let's suppose if I find value of uh, because we are calculating this theta. So this theta means we can say 10 theta we can apply. Yes. So 10 theta this is given by perpendicular upon base perpendicular we have 15 and base we have this one. So this is 3 by 2. Clear? So now can we calculate value of cos theta? Yes or no? Yes. So we can say when this is theta this is 3 this is 2 and this is under root of 5. Clear? So from here you can find because this is theta this is theta. So we can say this angle is what? 2 theta. Yes or no? So from here we can write like this cos 2 theta. Cos 2 theta we know this is 2 cos square theta minus 1. Clear? So can we find value of cos theta from here? Yes. This is equal to 2 upon under root of 5. Clear? So we can say 2, this is 2 upon under root of 5 whole square minus 1. Clear? So from here we can say this is 2 into 4 divided by 5 minus 1. So this is 8 by 5 minus 1 and we can say if we take LCM 5. So this is equal to 3 by 5. Now you can say sir why we are finding cos theta. Listen carefully. Now if we calculate value of E net. Clear? What I am saying to you now I am calculating value of E net. Clear? So listen carefully. We can write like this E net. This is given by under root of E1 square plus E2 square plus 2 E1 E2 and cos. Here we will write angle between these two vectors and we know angle is here this is 2 theta. So I am writing here this is 2 theta. Clear to everyone? Yes. Clear? Now, now we can put here all the values. So we can write like this E1. E1 square. E1 we can say this is K Q1 upon R square whole square. Yes or no? We can also write like this. This is K Q2 upon R square whole square. Clear? 2 times. We can say k q1 upon r square k q2 upon r square. So we can write like this k square q1 q2 upon we can say r to the power 4. Clear? Now we have value of cos 2 theta. Cos 2 theta value we have 3 by 5. So I can write like this. This is 3 by 
5 clear now we have to just calculate all these values and then we can get our answer clear to everyone so now actually first of all let us try to simplify this calculation clear so we can write like this k square we are taking common so this is k r to the power 4 we are taking common so this is r square so under root now we can write like this here we have q1 square plus q2 square plus 2 times q1 q2 into 3 by 5 clear now i am putting here all the values so now we can write like this in it clear this is k upon r square under root of clear value of q1 this is 1.5 whole square so we can say this is 2.25 plus clear this is 2.5 square so we can say this is 6.25 plus 2 times multiply 1.5 clear 1.5 and multiply 2.5 clear and it is multiplied with 3 by 5 clear and definitely 10 to the power minus 6 is also multiplying with each term and so we can see here this will be square square and square so we can take it common so we can write like this k upon r square into 10 to the power minus 6 now add all the values we can say this is 8.50 plus this is 2 multiply 15 by 10 into 25 by 10 into 3 by 5 clear to everyone so now we can say this is what we can say this is 5 and we can say this is 2 yes or no we can say this one and this one cancelled out this one is 2 and this one is 3 clear so now from here we can write like this k upon r square into 10 to the power minus 6 under root of 8.50 plus this is 3 multiply 3 we have 9 divide by we have only 2 left so this is 2 clear to you so from here we can write like this k upon r square into 10 to the power minus 6 this is what 4.5 this one is 8.5 so value we will get this under root of 13 yes or no so approximation you have to take so now we can find here value of e net so how can we calculate e net so apply normal to the line and passing through yes correct so now we can write like this e net value of k we have 9 into 10 to the power 9 divided by value of r square r value is what r value is what this is 18 centimeter clear so we can write like this 18 into 10 to the power minus 2 or you can write like this 18 into 18 into 10 to the power minus 4 clear this is 10 to the power minus 6 and this is under root of 13 clear now you can just simplify this is 2 clear we can say 10 to the power minus 2 and this is 7 clear so we can write like this 10 to the power 7 divided by 36 into under root of 13 clear now you can take here uh, you can calculate under root of 13 actually we know under root of 9 we have 3 under root of 16 we have 4 so approximately we can say this is 3.5 so 10 to the power 7 36 into 3.5 means we can say 7 by 2 clear approximately you can say this is 5 times clear so we can write like this we can take here 100 into 10 to the power 5 divide by this is 10 clear so approximately we can say 10 to the power 6 newton per coulomb so this is value of net electric field at point o clear at point o that is situated at a distance 10 centimeter from midpoint on the line joining two charges clear to everyone so this is all about this solution now dear student we are going to discuss question this is question number 2.15 and in this question it is given to you a spherical conducting shell of inner radius R1 and outer radius R2 has a charge capital Q. A charge small q is placed at the center of a shell. What is surface charge density on inner and the outer surface of shell? Clear? So now concentrate on a screen. Now in this question, it is given a spherical conducting shell. So before going to discuss this question, let us try to understand what is surface charge density surface charge density is defined as a charge this is present on the surface divided by area yes or no so now we can see let's suppose we have spherical conducting shell shell means we can say let's suppose like this we can say this is spherical shell clear so this is spherical shell now 
this is spherical shell it means we can say here we have a metal conducting body and inside we have a cavity in this question it is given to you a spherical conducting shell inner radius is r1 and this value is given r2 clear it is having charge q so we are providing charge capital q clear a charge small q is placed at the center of a shell clear so now we can see we are placing here a small charge q at the center of the shell clear now we have to find surface charge density at inner and outer surface now dear student if i assume here a gaussian surface and this is very close to this cavity let's suppose if i am assuming this is a gaussian surface clear now we know inside this cavity we have electric field this is zero yes or no we always know here we always find electric field zero so when we have electric field zero so according to gauss law clear according to gauss law we can say find it this is equal to q enclosed divided by epsilon naught clear actually here we write net charge we write here net charge this is present in a gaussian surface now we can say at the center we have a charge q so definitely whenever we have electric field zero it means we can also write like this when electric field we have zero it means net electric field lines that is passing through this cavity is zero so we can say this is equal to q net divided by epsilon naught now electric field is zero so we can say this term become zero so we can see net charge present inside this gaussian surface this become zero clear it means we can say a charge small q that is already present at the center so we can say an induced charge will be developed at the inner surface of this cavity clear or we can say inner surface of this uh, conducting shell clear we can say because we have to maintain total charge q clear so we can say total charge that is present at the outer surface this is capital q plus small q clear if you add capital q plus q and this is minus q you can say we are getting answer capital q clear so actually we also know whenever we are providing some charge to a conducting body its charge is actually comes to the surface clear because uh, we can say each charge is having mutual repulsion from other charges so we can say it will occupy surface area yes so we can say this is the distribution of a charge now our objective in this question is to calculate surface charge density so how can we calculate surface charge density of inner surface so let's suppose i am taking this surface is 1 and this one is 2 so we can write like this sigma 1 this is given by q1 divided by area clear now we can say charge present on the surface 1 this is minus q divided by because this is a sphere so we will take surface area of a sphere that is 4 pi r square so we can write like this 4 pi r1 square clear to everyone yes now if we talk about sigma 2 clear we can write like this sigma 2 this is equal to q2 by a clear value of q2 means we can say total charge this is present on a surface 2 so we can say this one is q plus q divided by we can say this is 4 pi r2 square clear to you so this is surface charge density on inner and the outer surface of this conducting shell clear to everyone so first part is clear clear now if we discuss about second part in this part it is given to you is the electric field inside a cavity zero yes definitely because whenever there is no any charge present in a cavity we can say electric field is zero so definitely this is correct even if shell is not spherical but have any irregular shape now listen carefully actually we already calculated here electric field is zero clear so let's suppose we have an irregular shape like this clear and let's suppose now we have to find electric field is also zero in this time yes actually if we talk about gaussian surface clear we can draw any gaussian surface clear let's suppose in in the previous problem we have drawn here a spherical gaussian surface this time we can draw any irregular shape but our main concern is the net charge present in the gaussian surface as well as we can say uh, net charge that is present so whenever net charge that is present is zero we can say electric field is zero yes so what is the difference in this situation if we have irregular shape there may be possibility here we have 
unequal distribution of a positive charges and the negative charges clear but important part is here net electric or net charge this is present any gauss inside any gaussian surface we can say this becomes zero so whether it is a regular or irregular shape object we can say electric field we always find here zero clear so here we will see electric field value is zero clear to everyone so this is all about this question now dear student we are going to discuss question number 2.16 and in this question we have two parts clear first we are going to discuss part number a clear in this question it is given to you we have to show that normal component of an electrostatic field has a discontinuity from one side of a charged surface to another given by e2 minus e1 dot n cap it should be equal to sigma upon epsilon naught where it is given n cap is a unit vector normal to the surface at a point and sur sigma is surface charge density at that point clear so now concentrate on a screen so let's suppose i am assuming here let's suppose here we have a sheet let's suppose this is a conducting sheet clear so let's suppose here we have a conducting sheet and we can say this is positive charge this is positive charge clear here we have positive charge actually this sheet is we can assume this is perpendicular to this screen and this is having almost let's suppose this is like this clear and it is having a very thin sheet but i am taking one side let's suppose this side i am taking here one and this side i am taking here two a very small thickness we have but i am taking this is two and this is one clear so first my objective here is to calculate value of electric field at any point p so let's suppose first i am taking here uh, let's suppose this point p we have and let's suppose here we have a q in this question it is also given to you you have to utilize only gauss law to solve this question so for that one i am taking here a gaussian surface so i can take let's suppose this is a gaussian surface i am taking this one i am taking i am actually drawing here a cylinder this one clear let's suppose i am taking here cross section area this cross section area we have a clear now we know due to this positive charge due to this e2 we can say electric field in this direction at point p this one we can say this is e2 clear and area vector is also in this direction so we can say this is a clear here we can say at point q electric field in this direction e2 and this is a clear now we can say actually we have here three surface two is this surface this is let's suppose this is uh, we can say just a minute yes we can assume here total we have three surface this is number one surface this is number two surface and we have third surface that is curved surface area of this cylinder clear so we can say electric flux if we calculate definitely we will find electric flux due to these two surface but due to third surface we are getting electric flux that is zero clear so we can write like this net flux net flux is given by we can say this is e2 a plus we can say this is e1 a clear so can we calculate here net electric field yes because we can say here we have positive charge at at one we also have same positive charge so we can also write like this this is two times of ea clear now we know net flux is also given by net charge present inside this gaussian surface so we can also write like this q by epsilon naught but here what is charge so let's suppose i'm taking surface charge density a sigma and let's suppose area is capital a we can say this is equal to sigma a upon epsilon naught clear from here you can say area and area this is cancelled out clear everyone so now we can say e this is given by sigma upon 2 epsilon naught clear so this is value of electric field now we can write this electric field in terms of vector clear so now listen carefully yes now listen carefully if we find here uh, if we find here first a uh, value of electric field in terms of vector so i can write like this e2 e2 vector is given by sigma upon 2 epsilon naught now in this question it is given n cap 
is a direction of n cap is from side 1 to side 2 so direction of n cap is given to you this one clear so we can write like this this is n cap and this value is positive because electric field and n cap both are in the same direction clear if we write here value of e1 now you can say value of e1 in left direction but n cap in the right direction so we can say this is equal to minus times of 2 epsilon naught n cap clear now what is our objective in this question is to calculate e2 minus e1 so we can write like this e2 minus e1 clear and this should be equal to now we can say sigma upon 2 epsilon naught minus minus sigma upon 2 epsilon naught so we can say this is sigma upon epsilon naught clear and here we are getting this is n k clear everyone yes or no but in this question our objective here is to calculate e2 minus e1 and we are getting here dot product with n cap. So we can write like this e2 minus e1 dot n cap. Clear? So we are doing dot product with n cap both sides. So we can write like this sigma upon epsilon naught n cap dot n cap. Now we know i dot i, j dot j, k dot k, this is equal to 1. So we can write like this e2 minus e1 this should uh, e2 minus e1 and dot n cap it should be equal to sigma upon epsilon naught clear to everyone so we can say this is a solution or we can say this is proof of part number a clear to everyone now this student we are going to discuss second part of question number 2.16 in this question it is given to you show that the tangential component of electrostatic field is continuous from one side of a charged surface to another clear so now let's suppose here uh, I am just taking here uh, let's suppose this is a body or let's suppose this is a conducting body let's suppose I am taking here let's suppose this is E2 clear and we can say let's suppose this is E1 clear I am taking this as E1 let's suppose this is E1 clear now let's suppose this is making an angle theta here this angle is also theta clear so now we can actually take here two components number one component in this direction so let's suppose this is e2 tangential and we can say this is e2 normal yes or no now we can say here in this direction we have this is e1 tangential and we have here in this direction this is e1 and this is uh, normal clear to you so this is normal clear now actually we have to utilize here a concept this is given work done by electrostatic field on a closed loop it should be zero so let's suppose if we utilize this uh, concept we can say work done in a closed loop it should be equal to zero so how can we write we can write like this this is integral of we can say this is e dot del l it should be equal to zero now what is net electric field that we have already sold in an uh, part number a we can say this is e2 minus e1 clear dot we can say this is dl now if we are removing dl we can say angle between this electric field vector and dl we are taking theta clear and this should be equal to 0 from here you can say we can write like this e2 minus e1 clear value of cos theta and integral of dl this should be equal to 0 now if we add dl 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 and let's suppose we have total value of total path length of this uh, closed surface closed loop this is equal to l so we can say e2 minus e1 this value is cos theta and multiplied with l this should be equal to 0 clear now we know l cannot be 0 it means definitely we can say value e2 cos of theta this should be equal to e1 cos of theta yes or no now what is value of e2 cos theta we can say this is e2 so we can say this is e2 cos of theta so from here we can say this value we have e and we can say this is 2 times of t clear everyone now what is value of e1 cos theta so we can say this is e1 t clear e1 t yes or no so e2 t this should be equal to e1 t clear so from here you can say actually show that the tangential component of electrostatic field now you can say this is tangential component of electrostatic field it is continuous from one side of a charged surface to another yes definitely continuous because we are getting here always tangential component 
this is having the same magnitude so definitely we can say it will be continuous clear to everyone so this is all about this question now dear student we are going to discuss question number 2.17 and in this question it is given to you a long charge cylinder of linear charge density lambda is surrounded by a hollow coaxial conducting cylinder fine what is electric field in the space between two cylinder clear so now concentrate on a screen in this question it is given to you a long cylinder of linear charge density given lambda so let's suppose here we have this long cylinder clear this is a cylinder this one let's suppose we have this long uh, we have a long charge cylinder clear and let's suppose i am providing here positive charge on this cylinder let's suppose clear positive charge let's suppose i am assuming length of this cylinder is capital l clear to you okay it is also given linear charge density we have that is lambda clear just remember linear charge density is provided to you now what is linear charge density linear charge density is defined as a charge present on a conducting body divided by length or we can say per unit length clear so we can say lambda is already defined it means you can write like this lambda this is equal to q by l so q is given by lambda times of l okay clear to you so this is lambda times of l q equal to lambda times of l clear now in this question it is given uh, it is surrounded by a hollow coaxial conducting cylinder it means we can see let's suppose here we have this hollow cylinder this one like this clear we have this hollow cylinder clear so let's suppose this is a hollow cylinder and we can see it is surrounded this given cylinder clear and this is conducting cylinder now we know due to this positive charge negative charges are induced on the inner surface of this cylinder because this is a neutral cylinder or we can say there is no any charge present on this cylinder so we can see outside positive charges are developed clear to you yes so positive charge is developed outside now let's suppose we can say this is axis of this cylinder now what is our objective in this question objective is clear what is electric field in the space between these two cylinder so if we want to calculate value of electric field first we are going to draw here a gaussian surface so how can we draw here gaussian surface it will be look like this this one let's suppose this is gaussian surface this one clear to everyone and let's suppose i am assuming radius of this gaussian surface is r clear so now we can write here gauss law for this uh, situation so i am writing here gauss law says net flux this is given by q net divided by epsilon naught clear now we can say here inside this gaussian surface we have only positive charges so we can also write like this this is integral of e dot da and this should be equal to q net divided by epsilon naught clear to you now let's suppose if we take here a very small element it is having an area da listen carefully what i am saying to you because positive charges are present here also we have a positive charge so let's suppose i am assuming net electric field direction inside or uh, between the space or between we can say net electric field between these two cylinder is given by e let's suppose because this is area so area vector is also in the same direction clear so we can say angle between e and da is zero so now we can write like this this is e da cos of zero and this should be equal to okay listen carefully charge enclosed in the gaussian surface now we know linear charge density is given so how can we calculate total charge this is lambda times of l so i can write like this lambda l divided by epsilon naught clear to everyone so now we can write like this this is e integral of da this should be equal to lambda l over epsilon naught clear now what is value of area so if we talk about surface area we can write like this this is 2 pi r multiplied with l clear so 
now we can say this is equal to e times 2 pi r multiply l this should be equal to lambda l upon epsilon naught clear to everyone so from here we can say l and l is cancelled out so value of e this is given by lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught into r clear e equal to lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught into r clear or you can also write like this e equal to 2k lambda upon r clear e equal to 2k lambda upon r it means we can say this is value of electric field this is uh, between these two coaxial cylinders clear to everyone so this is the answer of this question now dear student we are going to discuss this question question number 2.18 and in this question it is given to you in a hydrogen atom the electron and proton are bound to have a distance of about 0.53 angstrom okay we have to estimate potential energy of a system in electron volt taking potential energy is 0 at infinity okay fine actually we know we always define potential energy at a point whenever we are taking potential energy 0 at infinity clear our reference system is at infinity and at infinity we assume potential energy 0 and actually we also know potential energy is maximum at infinity clear rather than if you are not decreasing a distance between two charges less than 10 to the power minus 15 meter clear so important part is here we are taking reference at infinity where potential energy is zero so whenever we are bringing two charges close to each other at that time their potential energy decreases clear it means we will get value in negative clear so now in the first part it is given we have to find potential energy of a system in electron volt listen carefully so how can we calculate we can write like this potential energy expression we know very well this is k q1 q2 upon r clear now we know value of k this is 9 into 10 to the power 9 value of q1 and q2 two charges are given to you electron and proton electron is having negative charge and proton is having positive charge so we can say this is minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and it is also multiplied with 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 90 clear it is divided by distance between these two electron and proton is given to you 0.53 angstrom clear so we can say 0.53 into 10 to the power minus 10 clear so now we can write like this value of u this is given by 9 into 1.6 into 1.6 clear and this will minus also clear now we have 10 to the power 9 this is 19 minus 19 minus 19 and we have this is 10 to the power minus 10 so we can say this becomes 10 to the power 19 plus and this one is cancelled out clear so we can say this is 10 to the power minus 19 divided by clear now we can say this value 0 0.53 but important part is here here we will get answer in joule clear but our objective in this question is to calculate value of potential energy in electron volt so how can we calculate we have to divide this term with 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 clear so this is 0 0.53 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and it will be converted into electron volt clear so we can say this one and this one is cancelled out clear so now we can see we can write like this value of u this is equal to minus 9 into 1.6 divided by this is 0. Uh, 0. 0.53 actually we can take 0. 0.53 approximately 0. 0.5 so we can say this is 1 by 2 so we can say this is minus 18 into 1.6 electron volt clear so if it say 16 multiply 6 uh, I mean 18 multiply 6 we can say we have 8 we have 4 left clear so we have 18 multiply 6 we can see this is 108 yes or no yes this is 108 so we can say this is 8 now we can say 10 carry clear so this is 27 or 27.8 electron volt yes or no yes or no or approximately because we are taking here this is 0 0.50 clear so 
If we are taking 0.5, it means this value is 1 by 2, it will goes to the numerator, so this becomes 3.2, yes. Yes or no? Listen carefully, what I am saying to you, listen carefully, again I am repeating. Value we have minus 9 into 1.6 and this is 0.5, we can write like this, this is minus 18 into 1.6, clear? So you can write like this, 18 multiply 16, clear? So we can see this is what? 18 multiply 6 as a good. So you can write like this. This is what 10, this is 5, we can say this is 8. Clear? So we can see uh, 18 into 8, we have 6 and we can say 6, so 144. Clear? 144 divided by 5 we are getting and this is for minus, we can say 2, we have 28 point and we can see uh, 8 electron volt. Yes or no? But actually here we have 0 0.53. Yes. So if you actually calculate, you will find this is equal to minus 27.2 electron volt. Yes or no? Here you will get minus 27.2 electron volt. Clear? So remember, here we are getting potential energy minus 27.2 electron volt. Clear to everyone? So I am writing here, potential energy minus 27.2 electron volt. Clear? Actually, most important part for solving a question is what? This is not a calculation. This is the process by which we are going. Yes. Now, if we talk about second part, what is minimum work required to free electron given that kinetic energy is half of the magnitude of potential energy? Actually, we know kinetic energy is always positive and it is given. This is half of potential energy magnitude means we can say 27.2. So, from here we can say this is 13.6 electron volt. Clear? So, this is value of kinetic energy. Clear? Now, actually our objective here is to calculate what is total amount of energy that we have to provide to this system so that we can separate electron from this system. Clear? So, now we can see total energy. Total energy we can say this is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy. Clear? So, value of kinetic energy. Value of kinetic energy is given by now, this is 13.6 and we have this is minus 27.2. So, from here we can see, here we are getting minus 13.6 electron volt, this is total energy. Now, we know at infinity, total energy is what? Zero. Yes. So, if we want to free electron from a proton or if we want to free electron from atom, then we can see we have to provide total amount of 13.6 electron volt energy. Yes or no? At that time we can say total energy becomes zero. Yes. So actually work that we are the minimum work that we are providing here, this is equal to 13.6 electron volt. Clear? Actually we are getting here unit of work is also in terms of electron volt. Clear? So this is our answer. Now what are answer to A and B if zero of potential energy is taken at 1.06 angstrom separation? It means in the previous situation, we have uh, we assume potential energy is zero at infinity, clear? But now we are assuming potential energy is zero at a distance 1.06 angstrom. So now what we can do? Actually, now value of potential energy changes because we always find potential energy difference, clear? At infinity, we are taking potential energy zero, but now potential energy will not be zero at reference point, clear? So how can we calculate potential energy? Actually here, again we will write here formula, but formula will be A equal to potential energy, this is given by K Q1 Q2, 1 upon R1 minus 1 upon R2. Clear to you? So, value of K, this is given 9 into 10 to the power 9. Here we can say this is minus 1, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 whole square. I have already put here value of Q1 and Q2. Clear? Then we can write like this 1 upon R1. R1 we have, this is 0 0.53 angstrom, this is final position, minus. This is 1.06 angstrom and we can say this is 1 upon 10 to the power minus 10. Clear? So, now if we calculate, we can write like this. This is minus 9 into 1.6 whole square into 10 to the power minus 19 
uh, I am writing like this and we have 10 to the power minus 19 also. So 10 to the power minus 19 and this become 10 to the power minus 10 and this one cancelled out. Clear to you? Clear? Yes. Yes or no? So now we can write like this and if we are taking here 1.06 as an LCM we can say this is 2 minus 1. Clear? So now we can calculate value of potential energy that we are getting. I am writing here minus 9 into 1.6 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 divided by we can say this is 1.06. Now this value we are getting in joule. Clear? Now we can convert this value in electron volt if we divide this value with 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. Clear to you? Yes. So now we can see we can write like this value of u this is given by 9 into 1.6 into this 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 is cancelled out. So we can see we can write like this divided by 1.06 and this is in electron volt clear. So if you calculate you can say 9 multiply 6 we can say 5 we have 14.4 divided by 1.06 clear. So you will get this value minus 13.6 electron volt approximately clear. Now you can see we are getting potential energy minus 13.6 electron volt only. In the last situation we are getting minus 27.2 electron volt. So what we are actually information getting. In previous situation we are providing minus 13 point, we are providing 13.6 electron volt energy to a system at the time the separation between electron and proton increases from 0.53 angstrom to 1.06 angstrom clear to you and rest 13.6 electron volt is utilized to move that electron at infinity yes or no so now we can see here we are getting potential energy minus 13.6 electron volt clear now now if i say to you this is total uh, we, this we can say this is potential energy what is minimum amount of work is to be required if kinetic energy is half of magnitude of potential energy. So now we can see if we talk about kinetic energy this is 1 by 2 times of 13.6 clear. So if we calculate we can see this is 6 and we have 6.8 electron volt yes or no clear. So now we can see if we calculate total energy. Total energy we can calculate like this. Uh, kinetic energy we have 6.8 minus 13.6 and this is equal to minus 6.8 electron volt. Yes or no? Clear? So now we will provide 6.8 electron volt energy. Clear? Or you can also understand like this. Listen carefully what I am saying to you. If we are providing minus 13.6 electron volt, we are actually going from 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.53 angstrom to 1.06 angstrom. Clear? and the rest we can say we are providing 13.6 electron volt clear. So actually we provided only this much amount of energy and we reach up to the reference point clear to you. So now if we want to free the electron we can say in this situation we cannot free electron because that amount of energy that we are providing in this situation also we are getting electron in a bounded form yes or no. So now we can see here we are getting value of potential energy this one and if we want to free electron total energy we have to provide this is 13.6 electron volt clear to everyone. So this is all about this question clear. Now this time we are going to discuss question number 2.19 and in this question it is given to you if one of the two electrons of a hydrogen molecule is removed then hydrogen molecular ion H2 plus ion it form in the ground state of H2 plus the two protons are separated by roughly 1.5 angstrom and electron is roughly 1 angstrom from each proton fine. We have to find determine potential energy of a given system clear a very simple question we have. So now we can write like this let's suppose here we have two protons clear to you and in this we can say distance is given to you 1.5 angstrom. So this is 1.5 angstrom clear because this is a proton so we can say uh, let's suppose this is q1 I am just saying here q1 q2 clear and I can write here q1 equal to q2 and this is charge of an electron or we can say 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb but this is positive charge clear and electron let's suppose electron is situated at this position clear 
and it is given in the question this value is one angstrom clear to everyone clear and this is also one angstrom value of q3 you can write this is equal to minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb always remember pot uh, potential energy potential energy is a scalar quantity clear and whenever we have a scalar quantity we have to write all the values with plus and minus sign clear we do not take care of any direction clear so now we can write like this yes actually we have to specify here reference also so reference we are taking at infinity clear so at infinity we can say now we can write first of all our objective here is to find number of pairs clear so how can we calculate number of pairs you can take any two charge and you can form a pair and total number of charges we have this is 3 so we can write here this is 3c2 yes or no now you can say sir this is mathematics yes it's a just a find number of possible uh, possible terms of a potential energy so we can say 3c2 3c2 means what we can say number of 3 you can write like this 3c2 this should be equal to 3 factorial 3 divided by i am writing here clear 3c2 3c2 this means factorial 3 upon factorial 2 divided by 1 so we can say this is equal to 3 clear so now we can say here we will find total three number of pairs clear so we can write like this this is equal to u1 plus u2 plus u3 clear from here we can say this is equal to k q1 q3 divided by we can say r1 plus we can see or you can directly write so that you cannot get confused this is one angstrom clear yes you can also write like this k q2 q3 divided by one angstrom plus clear here we can say this is k q1 q2 q1 q2 divided by 1.5 angstrom clear now from here you can see in these two terms q1 and we can say q3 we have q2 is same as q1 clear and we have q3 also it means we can say both are same term so we can write like this this is equal to 2 times 2 times k q1 q3 divided by 1 angstrom plus we can say k q1 q2 q2 this is 1.5 angstrom i am writing like this this is 3 by 2 so this is 3 angstrom and this is 2 clear to you now we will write here all the values now listen carefully we can take here some common term yes so we can write like this 2k i am taking common value of q1 i am taking common so now we can say this is q3 divided by 1 angstrom clear plus we can say here we have a q2 so q2 divided by we can say here we have 3 also clear 2k q1 is common clear we have q2 and divided by 3 clear and this is angstrom so we can write this is 10 to the power minus 10 clear so now we can say here now if we put all the values we can say 2 into 9 into 10 to the power 9 into value of q1 value of q1 we can say 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 clear divided by 10 to the power minus 10 now value of q3 value of q3 we have minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 plus this is what q2 by 3 value of q2 we have 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 divided by 3 clear so now you can see this value we will get in terms of joule clear if we want to calculate in electron volt we have to divide with this term clear so we can see this one and this one cancelled out clear so from here we can see 18 into 10 to the power 19 clear now we can say this is equal to minus times of Uh, 2 by 3 clear if you take lcm you can see this is minus times of 2 by 3 multiply 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and we will get answer in electron volt clear from here you can say this one and this one cancelled out clear we can say this value is 6 so now we can find value of electric potential energy of the system so we can say u total this is given by 6 multiply 2 we have this is minus 12 multiply we can say this is 1.6 clear to you 6 multiply 2 clear and we can say this is multiply 1.6 and answer we will get in electron volt clear from here you can say 
we have this one. So, we are getting here answer minus 19.2 electron volt. Clear? Actually, this minus sign indicates what? Minus sign indicates that all the charges are bound to each other. Clear? And if we want to separate all the charges, we have to provide total energy plus 19.2 electron volt. Clear to everyone? So, this is a value of this question. Clear? So, this is solution. Clear? I think you are getting my all points. Clear? Yes. Now, dear student, we are going to discuss question number 2.20. And in this question, it is given to you. Two charge conducting sphere of radius A and B are connected to each other by a wire. What is ratio of electric field at surface of two sphere? So, in this question, it is given to you. Let's suppose. Let's suppose we have two sphere. Clear? Let's suppose this is sphere number A or we can say sphere number 1 having radius A. Let's suppose it is connected with a wire with another sphere. Let's suppose this one and it is having radius B. Clear? Now, let's suppose I am assuming initial, uh, let's suppose I am saying charge this is present on this sphere is Q1 and here we have charge this is present Q2. Clear to you? Now, so first our objective in this question is to calculate ratio of electric field. Clear? So, ratio of electric field means we can write like this E1 by E2. Now, what is location where we have to find electric field? Electric field at surface of two sphere means we want to find electric field at the surface of these spheres. Clear? So, we can directly write formula KQ upon R square. So, we can write like this KQ1 upon A square divided by KQ2 upon B square. Clear to everyone? So, we can write like this Q1 by Q2 and multiply with B square upon A square. Clear? Now, we can say, let's suppose we have a sphere that is having radius A, another one is B. It is having some charge. It means we can say this is a spherical conductor. Yes or no? So, we can assume it as an isolated conductor initially. But when we connect these two sphere with the wire, we can say charge will flow till we can say both sphere will gain a common potential. Clear? Or you can also write like this, charge Q1, this is written like this, C1 multiply V. Why I am just writing V? Because I connect these two sphere with the wire and when we connect with the wire, potential uh, potential on each sphere, it becomes same. Clear? Or you can say charge flow stops when potential on both sphere becomes same. Clear? So, we can say Q1 equal to C1 multiply V. We can also write like this Q2. This should be equal to C2 multiply V. Clear? So, from here we can say Q1 divided by Q2, it should be equal to C1 by C2. Clear to everyone? Yes or no? So, now we can say, if we talk about an isolated sphere, for an isolated sphere, we can say this is 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied with R. So, we can say this is multiplied with A. Clear? We can also write like this 4 pi epsilon naught B. Clear? So, we can say this one and this one cancelled out. Clear? So, from here you can say, we can also write like this Q1 by Q2, this should be equal to A by B. Clear? Yes or no? Now we can put value of Q1 by Q2 in this equation. Clear? So, from here we can write like this. This is A by B multiply B square upon A square. This one and this one cancel out. This one is also cancelled out. Clear? So, from here we can write like this. This is defined as the ratio of B and A. Clear to everyone? So, from here you can see, from here you can see E1 by E2. This is given by B by A. Clear to everyone? So, E1 by E2 ratio we have B by A. Clear? Okay. Now, can we uh, find value of E1 by E2 in terms of density? Yes. How? Listen carefully. Actually, we know E is written like this KQ by R square. Clear? Now, we can write value of charge in terms of surface charge density. Means, we can write like this K, it is multiplied with sigma. 4 pi, this is r square, whatever may be the radius of a sphere, clear? This is r square, we can say this one and this one cancel out, clear? So, from here you can say E, it is written like this sigma 4 pi and value of k you can write like this 4 pi epsilon naught. So, we can say this is written like sigma upon epsilon naught, clear? So, from here you can say E is written sigma upon epsilon naught, clear? From here you can also say E is directly proportional to sigma. Clear to everyone? 
So it means what I want to say, I can say, you can also write like this sigma 1 by sigma 2, it is equal to B by A. Clear? From here you can say, if we are assuming sigma 1 is a surface charge density of sphere number 1 and sigma 2 is a surface charge density of sphere number 2. Clear? So from here you can say, you can directly see sigma is direct inversely proportional to R. Clear? So now what we can conclude from this result? You can say, let's suppose we have sharp and the pointed end. So whenever we have sharp or pointed end, we can say the radius of curvature is always less. Clear? And whenever we have flatter portion, we can say radius of curvature is very large. Clear? So what I, what I am saying to you? <coughs> we can say sigma is inversely proportional to R. Clear? And from point for the pointed end, for the pointed end, we can say R is very less. So we can say sigma is more. Yes or no? It means we can say at a sharp point, we always find a large surface charge density. Clear? And if we talk about flatter portions, flatter portions, for the flatter portion, you can say R value is very large. So we can say sigma value is less. Clear to you? So like this, we can actually say that why charge density of sharp ended point is higher because it is having a less radius of curvature so when r is less we can say sigma is more clear to everyone so this is all about this question clear now distant we are going to discuss question number 2.21 and in this question it is given to you two charges minus q and plus q are located at point 0 comma 0 comma minus a and 0 comma 0 comma a respectively clear so let's suppose first we draw here a diagram a very simple diagram we are drawing let's suppose i am saying this is y axis i am just assuming clear let's suppose this is z axis and let's suppose i am assuming x axis in this direction clear to you so now we can say this is negative z axis clear now in this question it is given to you or let's suppose if I draw this diagram here, it will be better to you. Let's suppose this is y axis, let's suppose this is z axis and let's suppose this is x axis, clear? And let's suppose this is negative z axis, clear to you? Now it is given two charges minus q and plus q are located at point 0 comma 0 comma minus a. Means we can say here we have charge, this is minus q, clear? Clear? Here we have charge minus q and this position is given to you 0, 0, minus a. Clear? And second position is given to you this one. We have here charge plus q and 0, 0, a. Clear? Now in this question, our objective is to calculate electrostatic potential at point 0, 0, z. Clear? Now listen carefully. Now we can say value of z, it may be negative it may be positive clear so first let's suppose i am assuming value of z is at this point clear i am just assuming let's suppose this is point p 0 comma 0 comma z so can we calculate here value of electric potential at point p yes so we can calculate like this vp i am first calculating part number a clear so electric potential at point p this is given by we can say k q1 upon r1 plus k q2 upon r2 clear now we can say we can write like this k q1 value of q1 we have we can say uh, let's suppose i am taking this as 1 and let's suppose this is number 2 clear you can take any one 1 or 2 so we can write like this uh, k q1 q1 is what this one and value of r1 value of r1 we can write like this uh, we can say R is what? R1 is what? R1 is the distance between this point P and this charge Q. Clear? Now we can say this distance is capital Z and this distance is small a. So we can say this is Z minus a. Clear? Plus. We can write like this Q2. Value of Q2 we have minus Q. That's why I am writing here minus. This is Q divided by value of R2. Value of R2. We can say R2 value we have means uh, we can say distance from uh, distance of this point P from minus Q. So we can say this is A and this one is Z. So this is Z plus A. Clear to everyone? 
So from here we can write like this k. Now if I am taking here q common, so we can write like this. This is z minus a. This is z plus a. Clear? So if we take here LCM, we can see this is z plus a minus z plus a. Clear? So we can say z and z. This is cancel out. So from here you can write like this Vp means potential at any point P. This is given by k q and multiplied with 2 a and it is divided by we can say j square minus a square. Clear to everyone? Yes or no? So we can say value of q multiplied 2 a. Q multiplied 2a means we can say this is value Q and it is multiplied with 2a. It means we can say this is electric dipole moment. So we can write like this Vp. This is given by K P over Z square minus A square. Clear? So this is value of electric potential at point P. Clear to everyone? Now, but it is also possibility that this point P, clear? This point P, it should lie on this side also. Yes or no? It may be any possibility. So now let us try to solve that uh, possibility also. Clear? Now listen. Let's suppose I am taking here this point P this side. This is Z axis. Clear? Now I am taking now point P this side. Let's suppose this is point P 0 comma 0 comma Z. Clear? Now again I can write electric potential at point P. Clear? So we can say this value we have z clear. So first I am writing here formula k q1 upon r1 plus k q2 upon r2 clear to everyone. So now we can say k q1 upon r1 value of q1 we have plus q and we can write here distance r1 this is equal to a plus z. So this is z plus a then we can write value of q2 value of q2 we have minus q and divided by r2 r2 we can say z minus a so this is z minus a clear to everyone so we can write like this value of vp this is given by k q clear so now we can say z plus a z minus a z plus a z minus a clear so now we can write like this z minus a minus z minus a Clear? From here you can say z and z is cancelled out. So final value I am writing here Vp equal to minus kq multiplied to a divided by z square minus a square. Clear? Now we can write here q multiplied to a this is equal to uh, we can say dipole moment. Clear? So now we can write like this Vp value. So electric potential at point P this is given by kp upon z square minus a square. Clear? So actually we write here this value in terms of generalization clear you can put any value of z and you can find any value of electric potential clear to you. So this is all about uh, what is electric potential at point 0 comma 0 comma z clear. Now let us try to discuss what is electric potential at point x comma y comma 0 clear concentrate. Yes. Now concentrate on a screen. <clears throat> now our objective in this question is to calculate electric potential at x comma y comma z. Clear? So let's suppose again I am drawing this is y axis, this is z axis and let's suppose this is x axis. Clear? In this question it is given to you. Here we have a charge we are taking this charge q and this position 0 comma 0 comma a clear here we have position minus q 0 comma 0 comma minus a clear now we are taking the position of a point p where we want to find electric potential this is x comma y comma 0 it means we can say this value is lie in an x y plane yes so where is x y plane we can say this one yes or no we can say this is x y plane clear to everyone now we can say this xy plane is perpendicular to this z axis yes or no. So let's suppose I am taking here this point. <coughs> let's suppose I am taking this point and let's suppose this point is x comma y comma 0 clear. Now you can say <coughs> from z axis this is having this perpendicular distance clear to you. Now we can say this, this distance is already a this distance is also a. So from this charge we can say this distance and this distance 
means from this charge q this distance and this distance it always remains same yes or no so now we can say here we are having two equal and opposite charges and distance from these two charges is same for the point x comma y comma 0 yes or no it means we can calculate value of electric potential at point p this is given by k q 1 upon r 1 plus k q 2 upon r 2 now you can say q1 and q2 is same in magnitude but opposite in direction so we can write like this k q upon r1 let's suppose i am taking r clear here we can write like this kq by r we can say both are cancelled out and at this position we are getting electric potential is equal to zero clear to everyone so this is all about part number a clear now now we are going to discuss part number b obtain the dependence of potential of a distance r of a point from the origin when r by a is very very greater than 1 clear so now we can say actually we know value of potential so value of potential we can write like this vp this is equal to given by kp upon kp upon we can write like this r square minus a square clear here we can say potential at any point P, this is given by KP upon R square minus A square. Now in this question it is given R is R by A is very very greater than 1, clear? It means we can say R is very very greater than compared to A, yes or no? It means value of A square is neglected in terms of R square, yes or in comparison to R square A square is neglected, yes. So we can write like this VP, this is given by KP upon r square clear so from here you can see value of electric potential it is inversely proportional to r square clear to everyone yes or no yes so vp is inversely proportional to r square okay now if we talk about part number c in part number c it is given how much work is done in moving a small test charge from 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0 to minus 7 comma 0 comma 0 on the along the x axis okay so let's suppose if I, again if i draw this is y axis this is z axis and let's suppose this is x axis clear here we place a charge q at 0 comma 0 comma a and here we placed another charge minus q and this is 0 comma 0 comma minus a clear to everyone so now let's suppose we are uh, actually moving a charge a test charge from 5 comma 0 comma 0 so what is position of 5 comma 0 comma 0 this one yes or no it lies on an x axis and what is position of minus comma 0 comma 0 so this is let's suppose this is minus 7 0 comma 0 clear now we are bringing a test charge along x axis uh, from the point 5 to minus 7 it means we are bringing any test charge from this side to this side clear to you so let's suppose i am saying this is point a and point b so we are moving our test charge from point A to point B. So can we write like this work done? This should be equal to test charge and we can write like this. This is VB minus VA clear and this is work done from A to B clear. Like this we define always electric potential clear. So now we can write like this VB minus VA. This should be equal to WAB divided by Q clear. Now listen carefully if we talk about point b and if we talk about point a clear it lies at the same distance from both the charges clear to everyone yes or no if we talk about a and if we talk about b it lies at the same distance from both the charges it means we can say if we find total electric uh, potential at point a this is zero total electric potential at b this is also zero it means we can say va and vb both are zero so we can write like this wab it is divided by q and it should be zero minus zero clear so from here we can say if we are bringing any charge from a to b we do not have to provide any work done because here we have net electric potential zero yes or no and one more question is asking if let's suppose if we change some path we are not bringing any charge along the x-axis let's suppose we are moving in a zigzag uh, we are moving along a different path but along x-axis clear so if the path of a test charge between same point 
is not along the x axis what will happen so now we can see actually the work done is depends only on the initial and the final position it does not depend through which the path is, uh, through which the test charge is going clear so it means we can say the initial and final position is same and we can say electrostatic force is actually conservative force so conservative force it depends only on the initial and the final position and we can say so work done does not changes clear so value of work done is always remain same this is zero and answer changes no answer will not change if we, we are changing a path clear to everyone so this is all about this question clear now dear student we are going to discuss next question and this is a question 2.22 in this question it is given to you figure shows a charge array known as electric quadruple for a point on axis of a quadruple obtain the dependence of potential on r for r by a is greater than greater than very very greater than 1 clear and we have to compare this result with potential of and due to electric dipole and potential due to a point charge clear so now concentrate on a screen now listen carefully our objective in this question is to calculate electric potential due to a system of these charges clear now we can say actually here we have four charges clear you can say here we have q minus q minus q and q clear and we have to find net electric potential at point p due to this system of charges clear now we can say we can write like this vp this is equal to first i am writing a uh, electric potential due to this charge clear so we can say what is distance from this charge this value we have r this distance is a so we can say this distance we have r minus a clear so we can say due to this charge we can write like this kq upon r minus a clear now if we talk about this minus q charge we can see we can write like this minus kq divided by r clear now we have one more charge at this position so this is minus kq upon r clear now if we write potential due to this plus q charge we can write like this plus kq divided by total distance this is r and this is a so we can say r plus clear to you so from here we can say we can take here common this is kq so we can write like this 1 upon r minus a minus 2 by r plus 1 upon r plus a clear everyone yes now we are talking about vp so vp this is given by kq and if we are taking lcm so r this is r minus a and this is r plus a clear so now we can say if we we can write here r so r r plus a clear because here we have r minus a so we can write like this r means we can write like this minus 2 this is r square minus a square clear yes clear and here we have r plus a so we can write plus plus r r minus a clear to you so now i am simplifying it concentrate on a screen so again i am writing this expression vp vp we can write like this this is kq by r and in numerator we have r minus a and r plus a so we can write like this r square minus a square clear here we can write r square plus ar so r square plus ar we can write here minus 2 r square minus 2 r square plus 2 a square clear and we can say this is plus r square minus minus a r clear to everyone now we can see which one is cancelled out this one is cancelled out this one this one 2 r square this one is also cancelled out so from here you can see we can write like this kq by r multiply twice a square clear divide by we can write like this r square minus a square clear so we can also write like this we can also write like this this is equal to k clear here we can say this is 2q multiply a square i am writing like this 2 multiply q and a square and it is divided by r r square minus a square clear now actually we know electric dipole moment is q multiply distance between these two charges here we have twice q multiply a square so this is known as quadruple moment clear this is known as quad quad ripple moment 
what is meaning of quad? Quad means we can say four. Clear? So here we have four charges. That's why I'm writing here quadruple moment. Clear? Let's suppose I'm representing this moment with a term. Let's suppose Q. Clear? So we can write like this VP. This is given by K capital Q divided by this is R. R square minus A square. Clear? Now in this question it is given R is very very greater than compared to A. So we can write like this VP. This should be equal to K Q upon R Q. Clear? So now we can say electric potential due to this quad electric quadruple. We can say this is inversely proportional to R Q. Clear to you? Now if we talk about let's suppose we have only here electric dipole and Let's suppose we want to find electric potential at P on the axis of electric dipole. Now we at that time is if we satisfy this given condition then we know directly formula. So directly formula we can say due to electric dipole not quadruple. Quadruple is completed clear. So if I am talking about let's suppose here we have charge Q. Let's suppose here we have charge minus Q. Here we have distance 2A and let's suppose here we have any point P where we want to find electric uh, electric potential. So we can say this distance is what R clear. So we can say here this electric potential is given by 2 kp upon or we can say this is given by kp upon R square minus R square clear. So when R value is very very greater than compared to A we can say this is equal to kp upon R square clear. So now we can say due to electric dipole we are getting potential is inversely proportional to R square. Clear? Now let's suppose if we drop electric dipole. If we are just talking about a point charge. Clear? So with reference to point charge we can talk like this. Let's suppose here we have a charge Q. Let's suppose we want to find electric uh, potential at any point P at a distance R. Clear? So we can write like this VP. This should be equal to KQ by VP. VP is this is given by KQ by R. Clear to everyone? Yes or no? So from here you can see VP is inversely proportional to R. Clear everyone? Clear? So now we can say due to quadruple VP is inversely proportional to RQ. Due to electric dipole VP is inversely proportional to R square and due to point charge we can say it is inversely proportional to R. Clear? So this is all about this question. So dear student now we are going to discuss question number 2.23 and in this question it is given to you an electrical technician requires a capacitance of 2 microfarad in a circuit across a potential difference of 1 kilovolt. Okay. A large number of 1 microfarad capacitor are available to him and each of which we, uh, can withstand a potential difference of not more than 400 volt. Okay. Now we have to suggest a possible arrangement that requires the minimum number of capacitors. Clear? <clears throat> so now let us try to understand the given situation. Let's suppose it is given in this question that each capacitor that is available of 1 microfarad. Clear? And now we have to make <coughs> a circuit in which we will find equivalent capacitance this is 2 microfarad. Clear? So let's suppose I am drawing here let's suppose this is 1 capacitor, let's suppose this is 2 capacitor, let's suppose this is 3 capacitor and let's suppose total we have n capacitor in this circuit. Clear to you? Now <coughs> so we can see if we are connecting n capacitor in a, uh, in a series and let's suppose this is connected with a battery, it is connected with a battery and potential difference is given to you this is 1000 volt. Clear to you? This is 1 kilo volt. Clear? Okay. So now we can say here we are having capacitance let's suppose C. This is also C. This is also C. Clear? So my distance when n capacitors are connected in a series. How can we find equivalent capacitance? So we can write like this. 1 upon C dash. This is given by 1 by C plus 1 by C plus 1 by C and so on up to n times because we have total n capacitor clear so we can say this is n times clear so from here you can write like this 1 by c dash it is equal to n by c clear so we can say c dash value this is given by c by n clear now now we can say here we have equivalent capacitance this is c by n 
Yes or no? Now let's suppose if I am saying to you, let's suppose here we have total m number of rows such that we have total m rows. Clear? Yes or no? So if we are talking about n number of rows, then what is equivalent capacitance? Now we can say for one row of this capacitor, we can say we have equivalent capacitance C by n. Now we can say like this we have total m capacitors are connected in a parallel so we can see equivalent capacitor in parallel combination this is given by c equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 and so on so from here we can see c double dash this is given by we can see m times of c by n yes or no because we have total m number of rows we can write like this m times of c by n clear now one important information is given to you value of one capacitor this is one microfarad Clear? So I am writing here <coughs> m by n this should be equal to value of c is 1 and value of c double dash this is given to you this is required 2 microfarad. Clear? So you can write like this m by n into 10 to the power minus 6 this should be equal to 10 to the power minus 6 multiplied with 2. Clear? So from here we can see this one and this one cancelled out. Clear? So value of m this should be equal to twice of n. Clear everyone? So let's suppose this is equation number 1. Clear? Now, <clears throat> now listen carefully. Now we can see when n number of capacitor in a row is connected in a series and it is connected with 1000 volt battery. So this potential is actually equally distributed in each capacitor because in series combination we have total charge in a capacitor this remains same but potential is divided. Clear to you? So from here we can also write like this. We can also write like this. We have value of potential. Uh, we can say we can write potential of each capacitor. This is given by 1000 volt divided by divided by total. We can say uh, 1000 by we can say uh, value of potential or we can say number of capacitor. Yes or no? Clear what I am saying to you. Actually here we have, let's suppose, we have here 1000 volt battery. Let's suppose we are connecting here 10 capacitors. In series combination we have charges same. So but potential is divided. So we can say each capacitor is having 100 volt, 100, 100, 100, 100. So total 10 we can say this is 1000 volt. Clear to you? So we can say here this is equal to, in this question it is given a uh, capacitor that can withstand up to a uh, maximum of 400 volt potential difference. So this should be equal to 400. Clear to you? Yes. So from here we can see value of n. This is given by 1000 upon 400. Clear? So from here you can say this one, this one is cancelled out. From here this is 5 by 2 and this is 2.5. Now we can say we are getting from calculation total number of capacitor in a row. This is 2.5. Now we know half capacitor does not exist. So we will take it. This is equal to 3. Yes or no? So we can say total number of capacitor in a row. We have total 3. It's clear? <coughs> so now can we calculate value of uh, total number of rows we have? Yes, we have one relation m equal to twice n. So we can write like this m. This is equal to 2 and multiplied with 3. Clear? So from here we can see m this should be equal to 6. Clear? So from here you can see that we have total 3 capacitor in one row and such, uh, such capacitor series we have total 6 number of rows. Clear? So now can we make here a possible arrangement in which we find equivalent capacitor 2 microfarad? Yes or no? And each capacitor can hold maximum of potential difference 400 volt. Clear? So now we are going to draw that arrangement clear so actual arrangement we can draw like this this is one capacitor another capacitor another capacitor clear this is one row we need here total six row one two three this one two row one two three this one clear one two three four we can also draw like this one two three this one clear we need one more row one two three this one and finally it is connected with the battery that is having potential difference one kilo volt clear to you now we can say each capacitor is having value this is one microfarad so you can say value of each capacitor here we have c equal to one microfarad 
clear to everyone so now we can say this is the possible arrangement uh, that that is required for the electrician clear so this is all about this question clear to everyone now dear student we are going to discuss next question and this is question number 2.24 in this question it is given we have to find area of a plate of a two ferrule parallel plate capacitor and given here separation between the plates is 0.5 cm clear so now concentrate on a screen a very simple question of parallel plate capacitor we have so in this question it is given that we have to find area of a parallel plate capacitor so area this is our objective Capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is given. This is equal to twice farad, two farad. Clear? And separation between plate is given to you. D equal to 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter. Clear to everyone? Yes. Now our objective here is to calculate area. So we can write here one formula C equal to epsilon naught A by D. Now listen carefully in this question. It is not given that we have any dielectric. This is inserted between the plate. So we are assuming here that there is an air or we can say vacuum between plates clear now we can find here area <coughs> so area this is given by we can say c multiplied d and this is divided by epsilon naught clear so from here you can see capacitance is given to you twice farad and value of d this is 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 and it is divided by value of epsilon naught value of epsilon naught we have 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb square upon newton meter square clear from here we can see this is equal to 10 to the power minus 2 it is divided by 8.85 into 10 to the power 12 clear everyone so from here if you calculate you can find value of area like this we can say 10 to the power 10 divided by 8.85 so we can say this is 100 upon 8.85 and multiply 10 to the power 10 so we can say this is 10 to the power 8 clear to everyone so now we can say if we have 8 then we can write here this is 12.5 yes or no so we can say here we have value that is greater than from 8 it means we can write here value this is less than 12.5 it means let's suppose I am saying this is 11.8 clear and it is multiplied with 10 to the power 8 clear so we can write like this this is 1180 into 10 to the power 3 whole square we can write like this yes or no if we multiply with 10 uh, if we multiply with 100 here we have 10 to the power 6 we can write 10 to the power 3 whole square clear so we can write like this so from here you can say this is this value in meter square clear so we can also write like this this is 1180 kilometer square clear so area of a parallel plate capacitor this is 1180 kilometer square this is very very large clear that's why in our chapter we use mostly microfarad nanofarad uh, yes so we utilize this type of capacitors clear so actually if we utilize a uh, one farad or two farad capacitor the area or we can say size of the capacitor is very very large and this is impractical why impractical because if you find here the radius the radius will come out to be greater than this radius of an earth clear so we can say this is having a very large capacity to store charge this is an advantage but problem is what that the size of this capacitor is very very large clear to you so now we can say area of this parallel plate capacitor is 1180 kilometer square clear to everyone so this is all about this question so now dear student we are going to discuss this question question number 2.25 and in this question it is given to you obtain the equivalent capacitance of the network as shown in a figure for a 300 volt supply determine and determine the charge and voltage across each capacitor clear so <coughs> now dear student first of all let us try to understand that this circuit clear now we can say battery is connected at this point yes so now you can say directly you can observe 200 picofarad and 200 picofarad we can say these are in a series yes or no now how can we find c equivalent for these two capacitors we can say let's suppose i am saying this is c1 so directly we can write because they are connected in a series we can say this is c1 c2 upon c1 plus c2 so we can write like this c1 c2 
upon C1 plus C2. Clear? So, now we can see here we have two capacitor. So, 200 picofarad, 200 picofarad divided by we can say this is 200 plus 200. Clear to everyone? So, now we can say this is 400 divided by 400. Yes or no? Or you can write like this 400 into 100 divided by 400 clear from here you can say this one and this one cancel out and value of equivalent capacitance of these two capacitors we are getting this is 100 picofarad clear to everyone yes now we can say if we replace these two capacitor by a single capacitor having value 100 picofarad this 100 picofarad this 100 picofarad in a parallel combination so now we can write if we concentrate on these two then we can say these are in a parallel combination so now we can say c2 we can find like this this is 100 picofarad plus 100 picofarad clear so we can say in parallel combination we are getting value of equivalent capacitance this is 200 picofarad clear <coughs> now listen carefully this is a, the total c equivalent for this total arrangement we have 200 picofarad now we can say this 200 and this two this 100 this is in a parallel combination no this is in series combination why because it is connected with a single wire yes or no and we can see one end of this capacitor is connected to the another plate of an another capacitor clear so we can say this capacitor c4 and we can say total capacitance uh, this is equal to 200 picofarad yes or no now we can say this 200 and this 100 in a series combination so now we can write like this now final let's suppose i'm saying this c triple dish this is given by 200 multiply 100 and it is divided by 300 and this is pico farad clear to everyone yes so now we can write like this this one and this one cancel out from here we can say this is 200 divided by 3 and this is pico farad clear so i am just writing here all the important conclusion so now we can see first of all we are getting here if we are talking about <coughs> if we are talking about these two then we are getting equivalent capacitor this is 100 picofarad clear now whenever we are discussing about these two capacitors then we are saying these are 200 picofarad clear to everyone and whenever we are talking about this net C equivalent clear whenever we are uh, talking about all the final C equivalent of all the circuit we can see that C triple dash this is given by uh, this is 200 by 3 pico farad clear to everyone so this is a result that we are getting from the combination clear so first answer we are getting here equivalent capacitance of a network so equivalent capacitor of a network is given by 200 by 3 pico farad clear to everyone yes now our next objective here is to calculate value of a uh, charge and the voltage that is present on each capacitor clear so now if i draw here an equivalent uh, circuit we can see we can write like this here we have c double dish or c triple dish of capacitance clear and it is connected with the battery and it is having 300 volt supply clear to you so from here we can say can we find value of q yes or no yes we can find value of q so we can write like this value of q this is given by c triple dash into multiplied with v clear so we can say this is 200 divided by 3 into 10 to the power minus 12 multiply potential difference of a battery we have 300 so we can say this is 100 so we can say 2 into 10 to the power 4 and this one minus 12 so this is 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb clear to everyone so value of charge we are getting here 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb clear to everyone yes so from here directly you can see uh, if i am writing here let's suppose uh, we are talking about charge and the voltage and i am writing here for capacitor this is c1 c2 c3 and c4 clear so here we will write all the observations 
clear to everyone yes now listen so value of charge we are getting for the equivalent circuit this is 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb now we know whenever two capacitors are connected in a series the value of charge always remains same yes or no so directly we can say on capacitor number c4 we can say value of charge q this is 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb clear so directly we can say here we are getting 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 clear here we are getting charge in terms of coulomb clear this is coulomb clear to everyone yes now we can see whenever we are whenever we know value of charge on this capacitor so can we find the potential difference across this capacitor yes clear so how we can write like this value of q this is given by c4 into v let's suppose dash or you can say this is v4 clear v4 so we can write like this v4 this is equal to q upon c4 clear so value of q we have we can say 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 and value of capacitance of C4 this is 100 picofarad 100 into 10 to the power minus 12 clear we can say this is 10 to the power minus 10 clear when it goes to numerator it becomes 100 so finally we can say this is equal to 200 volt this is 200 volt clear so now we can say potential difference across the C4 capacitor we are getting 200 volt clear everyone here we are getting charge in coulomb and this is in volt clear okay now we can say listen carefully <clears throat> whenever we are having 200 volt potential difference across this capacitor so remaining potential difference we will find across this branch yes or no so we can say total we have 100 volt across this branch now we can say if we talk about this branch we can say these two ends and these two ends are having same potential yes or no so we can say the potential difference between these two points and these two point is same and this is equal to 100 volt so directly we can say potential difference across c1 we are getting 100 volt clear so can we calculate value of charge across c1 yes so here we can write like this we can say this is equal to c1 v1 clear so we can say q1 value of c we have 100 into 10 to the power minus 12 and this is 100 volt clear so 100 100 10 to the power 4 this becomes 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb clear so value of charge we are getting 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb clear to everyone yes now we can say same potential difference we will get across these two ends yes or no now we can say we are having two same capacitor yes or no 200 picofarad 200 picofarad it means we can say this 100 volt potential difference is equally distributed in all the two capacitors clear so we can directly say here 50 volt and 50 volt for across each capacitor so here we can say this is 50 volt and this is also 50 volt clear to everyone so can we find value of charge this is stored in a c2 and c3 yes definitely it will be same clear because value of c is same value of potential difference is same it means here we can write like this value of q2 and q3 this is same and this is equal to c multiply v so c c we have 200 into 10 to the power minus 12 and multiply potential difference we have 50 clear from here you can say this is what 5 multiplied to 10 so we can say 10 to the power 4 so we are getting 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb clear so we can say here value we have 10 to the power minus 8 and 10 to the power minus 8 clear so like this we can calculate potential difference across each capacitor and charge this is stored across each capacitor clear to everyone so this is all about this question now this time we are going to discuss next question and this is question number 2.26 in this question it is given to you the plates of a parallel plate capacitor have an area of 90 centimeters square each and are separated by 2.5 mm the capacitor is charged by connecting it to a 400 volt supply now first how much electrostatic energy is stored by capacitor clear so my dear student do you know what is formula of electrostatic energy stored in a parallel plate capacitor i know you know this formula so that expression is actually just a minute that expression is given by u this is equal to 
half of CB square. So first of all here we will find capacitance of this parallel plate capacitor. Clear? So we can write like this. See, this is equal to epsilon naught A by D. Clear? Value of epsilon naught we know 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 and multiplied with area. So area. Area is given by 90 centimeter square. So 90 into 10 to the power minus 4 and it is divided by D. D is given to you 2.5 mm. So 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3. Clear? So now if we solve it, you can see we can write like this 8.85 into 90 into 10 to the power minus 16 and we can say this is uh, it will go in the upper so 10 to the power minus 16 and 10 to the power minus 13 and divided by we can write like this this is 5 multiplied 2 clear so if you cancel it you can say this is 1 clear we have 3 so 7 we have again 3 this is 1.77 clear and if we multiply it with 90 and 2 we can write like this first time multiplying with 2 so we can say uh, 14 we have 15 and we have 1 so this is 3.54 yes or no if you multiply with 2 we have 14 1 15 we have 1 3.54 and multiplied with 9 into 10 to the power minus 12 clear so now if you multiply you can see this is 6 we have 3 so uh, we can say 45 48 we have 4 27 this is 31 so 31 into 10 to the power minus 12 clear to everyone yes now we can write like this value of uh, capacitance value of capacitance this is given by 31.86 into 10 to the power minus 10 farad yes or no we can write like this clear to everyone so this is value of uh, we, we can say this is value okay 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 here we have these two points also clear so directly we can say this is equal to pico farad clear or we can write like this, this is minus 12 farad. Clear to everyone? Yes. So this is value we are getting for the C. So I am writing this value here. This will be useful for us. So value of C, this is 31.86 into 10 to the power minus 12 farad. Clear? So now we are going to write here expression of electrostatic potential energy. So energy stored by a capacitor, this is given by U. This should be equal to half of cv square clear now we can write like this 1 by 2 into c c we have 31.86 into 10 to the power minus 12 and multiplied with v square v value is given to you 400 so 400 into 400 clear so from here you can see this one is cancelled out by 2 we have 8 so 8 into 31.86 into 10 to the power 4 this is 10 to the power minus 8 clear so if you multiply you can see here we are getting 8 we have 4 so again we have 8 we have 6 we have 14 we have 1 so this is 254.88 into 10 to the power minus 8 and this is in joule yes or no so we can say this is value of electrostatic potential energy stored between parallel plate capacitor clear to everyone yes or no Clear to you or not? Yes, correct. Clear? <coughs> you can also write like this. This is 2.54 into 10 to the power minus 6. Clear? So this is value of energy stored in a capacitor. I am writing here. So U. U is given by 2.54 into 10 to the power minus 6 Joule. Clear to everyone? So the part A is completed. Now in the second part, it is asking to you, view this energy as energy stored in a, uh, stored in the electrostatic field between plates. Okay, fine. Obtain the energy per unit volume U. Clear? It means our objective here is to calculate energy density. Clear? Energy density is defined small u. This is, we can say, potential energy stored per unit volume. So volume we can write area of a parallel plate capacitor and the separation distance between them clear so energy stored energy stored we can say this is given by 2.54 into 10 to the power minus 6 and it is divided by area area of a parallel plate capacitor is given to you yes 90 centimeter square so 90 into 10 to the power minus 4 and multiplied with separation 
between parallel plate capacitor 2.5 mm so 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 clear so now we can solve it easily we can write like the 2.54 into 10 to the power minus 4 10 to the power minus 3 10 to the power minus 7 we can say this is multiplied with 10 clear we can also write like this 90 into 5 multiplied 2 yes or no we can write like this 5 by 2 so we can write like this this one and this one cancelled out clear so if you multiply you can see we have 8 we have 10 we have 1 this is 5.08 this is 9 and multiply with 5 clear approximately you can say this is 1 approximately I am saying this is value 1 so 1 by 9 clear so if you solve it you will find here 0 0.113 joule per meter cube clear so this is value of energy density clear energy density means what we can say energy stored between parallel plate capacitor per unit volume how can you calculate volume volume is calculated by area of a parallel plate capacitor and multiplied with the separation distance between them clear to everyone so this is value of energy density clear to you yes now one more part is asking to you here arrive a relation between magnitude of electric field and energy density clear so now you can say energy density is given by energy stored per unit volume so we can write like this this is half of cv square divided by ad clear now we can write value of capacitance so 1 by 2 epsilon naught a by d and multiplied with v square and this is ad clear to everyone so now we can say a and a this is cancelled out so value of small u this is given by 1 by 2 we can say epsilon naught and this is v by d whole square clear so now we can say this v by d is what potential difference divided by separation between parallel plates so now we can write like this 1 by 2 epsilon naught and this is value of electric field clear so energy density expression this is also given by half of epsilon naught into e square always keep in mind here we are assuming between parallel plate capacitor we have only air or vacuum we are not inserting any dielectric material clear if we insert dielectric material what will happen we can say value of capacitance this becomes k times of kc yes or no and at that time we will find here value of k also clear to everyone or you can say this permittivity value we will get here permittivity of a medium clear so you can easily get this expression clear to everyone so this is all about this question now dear student we are going to discuss question number 2.27 and in this question it is given to you 4 microfarad capacitor is charged by a 200 volt supply clear it means situation to situation is given to you like this let's suppose here we have a capacitor and this is connected with a battery and we can say this is equal to 200 volt potential difference we have and capacitance is given to you 4 microfarad clear to you yes now can we find first what is initial potential energy but first read the question what is our objective in this question clear in this question it is given then it is disconnected from supply and it is connected with another uncharged 2 microfarad capacitor clear okay so how much electrostatic energy of first capacitor is lost in the form of heat and electromagnetic radiation clear so now we can say initially when we are connecting this 4 microfarad capacitor with the battery we can find here initial potential energy clear so we can write like this u initial this is half of cv square clear so we can write like this 1 by 2 value of c value of c we can say this is 4 into 10 to the power minus 6 into v square means we can say this is 200 square clear to everyone so now we can write like this this is 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 into 4 into 10 to the power 4 clear from here you can say this is 8 so 8 into 10 to the power minus 2 joule clear so this is value of initial potential energy this is stored in a capacitor clear now after that what is given in second situation we are disconnecting this capacitor from this battery and now we are connecting two microfarad capacitor that is uncharged clear it means now situation is just like this this capacitor is already fully charged clear 
let us suppose like this, this is plus minus value of capacitance we have 4 microfarad clear and this is given to you 2 microfarad but this is uncharged clear. So, definitely we can say charge will flow from this direction to this direction and this uncharged capacitor is also charged by some extent clear. Now, we can say charge flow will stop when we can say whenever we have a common potential clear or you can say here we can calculate value of total charge present on 4 microfarad capacitor from first condition clear we can say q this is given by cv clear value of c value of c is given to you 4 into 10 to the power minus 6 multiply potential difference potential difference we have 200 clear so from here we can say this is equal to 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 coulomb clear yes or no this value given 4 into 10 to the power minus 6 this one is 200 so this is 800 into this one clear so this is value of q now we can write like this if we consider this as a system then we can say total charge remains same yes or no but we can say these two capacitors are connected in parallel so whenever two capacitors are connected in parallel we can write equivalent capacitance this is given by c1 plus c2 clear and let us suppose common potential we have this is v clear so we can find here value of v value of q this is given uh, 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 divided by c1 plus c2 we can say 4 plus 2 6 so 6 into 10 to the power minus 6 clear to everyone so from here we can say uh, we can write like this this is 4 by 3 into 100 volt clear to everyone so now we can find final uh, final potential energy clear so we can say this is given by 1 by 2 c1 plus c2 c1 plus c2 is given to you 6 microfarad so 6 into 10 to the power minus 6 into v square clear so we can write like this 4 by 3 into 4 by 3 into we can say 10 to the power 4 clear so from here you can see this one is 2 2 and 2 cancelled out clear so now from here you can write like this u final yes now you can say u final u final is given by like this u final equal to 4 multiply 4 16 by 3 so 16 by 3 into 10 to the power uh, we can say minus 2 yes or no this is minus 6 and my, uh, that is 10 to the power 4 so we can say this is equal to 5 point clear so we can say 5.33 into 10 to the power minus 2 joule clear so initial potential energy stored in a capacitor is given by 8 into 10 to the power minus 2 joule and final potential energy is given by this expression clear so how can we calculate total amount of energy is uh, lost in the form of heat or in the form of uh, electromagnetic radiation so this is given by delta u equal to u initial minus u final clear so u initial is given to you 8 into 10 to the power minus 2 joule minus this value is given 5.33 into 10 to the power minus 2 joule clear so from here we can see we can see here uh, we can say this is uh, 7 here we have 6 and we can say this is 2 so 2.6 into 10 to the power 2.67 into 10 to the power minus 2 joule so this is amount of uh, energy or we can say this is amount of initial energy this is lost uh, in the form of heat or electromagnetic radiation clear to everyone so now we have this is correct answer 2.67 into 10 to the power minus 2 joule clear everyone now dear student we are going to discuss this question 2.28 and in this question it is given to you show that the force on each plate of a parallel plate capacitor has a magnitude equal to 1 by 2 times of q e clear and q is charge stored in a capacitor and e is the magnitude of electric field between the plates clear to you so now we are going to uh, solve this question so concentrate on a screen now dear student let's suppose here we have a parallel plate capacitor this is parallel plate capacitor let's suppose here we have positive charge and let's suppose this is negative charge clear 
Now let's suppose this parallel plate capacitor plate is having area this is A and inside this or can, we can say between this space we have electric field this is E. Clear? So now we can calculate here total charge this is present on a parallel plate capacitor in the form of surface charge density. So we can write like this Q, Q is given by sigma multiply A. Clear to you? Now if we find value of electric field between these two parallel plates, we can say let's suppose if we want to find electric field at this point. So we can say due to let's suppose this is 1 and 2. Due to 1 here we have electric field in this direction that is E1 and this is E2. Clear? So from here we can say we can write like this E net this is given by E1 plus E2. Clear? So E1 plus E2. Now we know due to this uh, let's suppose this is infinite sheet clear and due to this infinite sheet we have value of E this is sigma upon 2 epsilon naught clear and this is also sigma upon 2 epsilon naught. So from here we can say this is sigma upon epsilon naught clear. So we can say value of E this is given by sigma upon epsilon naught clear everyone yes. Now what is our objective in this question? In this question is to calculate force acting on each plate clear. Now let's suppose what I am doing here listen carefully let's suppose spacing between these two parallel plates we have small d. Now let's suppose if I am displacing this uh, let's suppose I am increasing distance between these two parallel plates by delta x amount clear. So now can we find that against this electric field we have to do some work yes. So we can write like this work done this should be equal to f dot delta x clear. Now let's suppose I am exerting force in the right direction and displacement is also in the right direction. So directly I can say this is f multiply delta x clear. Now important part actually we have to do some work against electrostatic field means definitely here electrostatic potential energy is stored between parallel plate capacitor. So we can write like this this is energy density and we can say uh, multiplied with volume clear. So volume we can say volume uh, we can say the area of this plate and the displacement of the uh, we can say displacement of this parallel plate clear. So from here you can say this one and this one cancel out clear. So we can write like this force this is equal to u and this is multiply a clear to you. Now from here we can write like this this is 1 by 2 epsilon naught e square multiply a clear. From here you can see we can write sigma this should be equal to epsilon naught times of E clear. So now we can say let's suppose if I take epsilon naught and E in one bracket then I can write like this 1 by 2 epsilon naught E and E multiply A clear. So we can say this value is what sigma clear and sigma multiply A we have Q clear. So we can see this is equal to 1 by 2 multiply this is sigma and I am writing like this sigma A multiply E clear. So sigma A, sigma A it is given by Q. So we can say this is 1 by 2 times of Q E clear. So this is our proof. But actually we have to find what is exactly what is the meaning of this half clear because we know that work done W it should be equal to Q V or we can say we can say what is meaning of this half of a factor clear meaning of half factor is what? We know between these two parallel plates we have a uniform electric field clear but if we talk about outside the outside the parallel plate capacitor we have value of electric field is 0. So this half is indicating that we are taking here value of force that is average of the electric field clear I mean value of force this is value of force clear. So value of force is given by 1 by 2 times of QE it means to the left side of this plate we have electric field E here we have 0. So we are taking average value of electric field this is E by 2 and we can say force is given by 1 by 2 times of QE clear everyone. So this is all about this question clear. Now dear student we are going to discuss this question question number 2.29 and in this question it is given to you a spherical capacitor consists of two concentric spherical conductors held in position by suitable insulating support we have to show that value of capacitance is given by 4 pi epsilon naught R1 R2 upon R1 minus R2 clear to you 
and R1 and R2 is the radius of outer and inner sphere respectively. Clear to you? So now we are going to derive this expression. Concentrate on a screen. Let's suppose. <coughs> Let's suppose I am taking here two sphere. Let's suppose this is inner sphere, and let's suppose I am taking one more sphere, this one. This is outer sphere. Clear to you? So we have here two sphere. Clear? Radius of R1 and R2 is the radius of R2, uh, that is outer and the inner sphere respectively. It means we can see this radius is given to you R1. Clear? And we are taking this as radius R2. Clear to you? Yes. Now we have to prove that value of capacitance is given by this one. Clear? So now concentrate on a screen. Actually, here we have two spherical shell. So whenever we talk about R less than R2, we find E value equal to 0 because this is a shell. Clear? And we can say, let's suppose you can assume it as a cavity, and inside a cavity we have electric field equal to 0. Clear? Now Let's suppose if I take R is greater than R1, again you will find here E equal to 0. Why? Let's try to understand. Let's suppose if we are giving here minus charge to or minus Q charge to this inner sphere. Clear? Now you can see by induction method, we can see here uh, charges that is produced, this is positive charge. Clear? Because outer sphere is a neutral one. We are not providing initially to the charge, so this will be neutral clear so in on the inside surface we have positive charge and outside surface we have negative charge clear so overall it becomes neutral but what we are doing actually we are earthing outermost cell like this so we can say that this negative charge is neutralized by earth clear everyone actually we are doing here earthing clear so now this is a now this is a uh, our spherical capacitor clear now we can say here we have assuming this is negative charge minus q, this is plus positive charge plus q, clear? Now our objective here is to calculate value of capacitance. Now we know capacitance is given by uh, C equal to Q by delta V. Delta V is what potential difference between these two surfaces. We can say this point and this point, clear? So potential difference is between these two points. So if we calculate here potential difference, then we can directly say what is value of capacitance of spherical capacitor clear to you so now we are going to first calculate potential difference and for potential difference we need electric field value clear so for that one we are drawing here a gaussian surface clear so we can say let's suppose i am drawing here this is a gaussian surface let's suppose this is gaussian surface and let's suppose here radius is given to you let's suppose r clear so if we apply here gauss law we can write like this integral of e dot dA, this should be equal to, now we can say charge enclosed. Now we can say either you can take direction of electric field logically or you can take here minus Q, clear? So we can say, let's suppose I am taking here charge present, this is Q and divide by epsilon naught, clear? From here you can say E, okay, value of dA. Now we can say because this is spherical shell or Surface area of this Gaussian surface we can take 4 pi r square, clear? And this should be equal to q by epsilon naught, clear to you? So from here we can say value of E, this is given by, uh, we can write like this, this is q upon 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied with r square, clear? So from here we can say this is equal to kq divided by r square, clear? So value of electric field is given by this expression. Now you can see as value of R is changing, at that time we can say value of E is changing. So I think you know whenever E is changing, which relationship we can apply for the to calculate electric potential. So here we can apply delta V, this should be equal to minus times of E dot, uh, we can say E dot D or we can say this one, yes or no? delta V equal to E dot and let's suppose I am saying this is dr, clear, E dot dr, clear. Now let's, we can say at any point, let's suppose if we are concentrating on this point, electric field is now inward direction, electric field in inward direction and let's suppose we are displacing this Gaussian surface by dr amount, it means we can say here, we are taking E dr, this is cos of 180, 
clear now we will put here limit of r so we can say value of r we can write r2 to, to r1 so from r2 value to r1 clear now we know cos 180 equal to minus 1 so we can write like this delta v this should be given by r2 to r1 and this is e d r clear now i am writing here value of e this is kq upon r square so we can write like this delta v this should be given by from r2 to r1 clear value of e we know this is kq upon r square and this is dr clear so now you can take here kq common and you can write like this delta v this is given by r2 to r1 clear you can take here kq common and this is equal to delta v and 1 upon r square dr so what is value of integration 1 upon r square dr we can write this is minus 1 upon r so kq this is minus 1 upon r so from r2 to r1 clear so now we can write like this actually this delta v is what we can say this is potential difference between 1 and we can say position 2 clear so you can write like this this delta v it is given by k value of k we have 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught and here we have q clear and we can write like this this is minus 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 clear to everyone yes so we can write like this delta v this should be equal to q upon 4 pi epsilon naught 1 upon r2 minus 1 upon r1 clear so from here we can write value of delta v this is equal to q upon 4 pi epsilon naught and this is r1 r2 and this is r1 minus r2 clear to everyone now our objective in this question is to calculate capacitance of a spherical capacitor so we can write like this value of c so we can say capacitance value this is given by q divided by delta v clear delta v actually we know formula q equal to cv where v is what potential difference so we can write like this q upon value of delta v it is given by q upon 4 pi epsilon naught and this is r1 minus r2 upon r1 r2 clear so from here we can say q and q this is cancelled out clear so we can write like this value of c value of c this is given by 4 pi epsilon naught this is r1 r2 divided by we can say r1 minus r2 clear so this is formula of uh, capacitance of a spherical capacitor clear so this can uh, always keep in mind you should memorize this formula this is very very important clear and same we have a value of capacitance for a cylindrical capacitor also clear so that one is having a different formula but you should keep in mind for a spherical capacitor formula is 4 pi epsilon naught r1 r2 upon r1 minus r2 clear to everyone so this is all about this question now this student we are going to discuss this question 2.30 and this question is based on a spherical capacitor clear so now concentrate on a screen in this question it is given to you a spherical capacitor has radius uh, this is inner surface inner sphere of radius 12 centimeter clear so i am writing here value of r2 this is given to you 12 centimeter clear i am taking one surface this is outer surface and inner surface i am taking second one so r2 equal to 12 centimeter and outer sphere of radius r1 this is equal to 13 centimeter clear to you now it is also given outer sphere is earth and inner sphere is given a charge of 2.5 micro coulomb so value of q this is given 2.5 micro coulomb clear it is also given the space between spherical capacitor is filled with a dielectric or this is given value k this is equal to 32 clear to you now we have to find value of capacitance of capacitor clear now listen carefully for a spherical capacitor value of capacitance it is given by a formula 4 pi epsilon naught this is r1 r2 divided by r1 minus r2 clear to you so from here we can write like this 4 pi epsilon naught this is equal to 9 into 10 to the power 9 multiply r1 r2 
we can say this is 12 into 13 into 10 to the power minus 4 divided by r1 minus r2 we can say r1 minus r2 1 centimeter so this is 10 to the power minus 2 clear from here you can say this is 10 to the power 7 so we can say this is 10 to the power minus 11 yes or no now so we can write like this value of c this is given by 12 into 13 now important part is here i am writing here only epsilon naught because epsilon naught we will write only where there is air and vacuum but here it is also given a dielectric also so we will also multiply it with k because here we put 4 pi epsilon and epsilon is permittivity of a medium clear so we can write like this so we have to multiply it with k also value of k we have 32 clear to you so we can write like this 12 multiply 13 into 32 into 10 to the power minus 11 divided by 9 clear so now i am calculating here So, we can write like this value of c, this is given by 12 multiply 13 multiply 32 into 10 to the power minus 11 divided by this is 9, clear? So, we can say this is 3, this one is 4, clear? So, 4 into 13 into 32 divided by 3 into 10 to the power minus 11, clear? So, now we can see. Now, we can write like this, value of c, this is given by 4 multiply 13, we can say this is 52 into 32 divided by 3 into 10 to the power minus 11, clear? So, if you calculate, we can say uh, 32 multiply 52, we can say this is 4, we have 6 and 10, this is 16 and we have 15, clear? So, 4, 6, 6, 1, 1, 6, 6, 4, yes or no? <coughs> Yes or no? Yes. So, we can write like this 1, 6, 6, 4 divided by 3, clear? Into 10 to the power minus 11. So, from here you can say this is 5, clear? We have 1 left, again 5. We have 1 left, we can say 4, clear? We have 2 left and we can say this is 6. Yes or no? And this is 10 to the power minus 11, clear? And this value is in farad, clear? So, now from here we can write like this value of capacitance this is given by 5.54 into 10 to the power minus 9 farad clear or you can write like this value of capacitance is given by 5.54 nano coulomb nano farad clear to you yes or no yes so this is value of capacitance of this spherical capacitor clear to everyone clear now second part is here what is potential of the inner sphere clear so i am writing first value of capacitance uh, to the left side of this screen so value of capacitance this is given by 5.55 uh, 5.54 into 10 to the power minus 9 farad clear to you now now if we solve part number b part number b part number b is given to you what is potential of inner sphere clear so potential of inner sphere this is given by we can say this is divide q divide by c yes or no because we know q equal to what cv yes or no yes so objective is to calculate potential of inner sphere clear so value of q q value is given 2.5 micro coulomb clear and value of capacitance this is given by 5.5 into 10 to the power minus 9 clear so from here we can see 25 divided by 55 into 10 to the power 3 clear so from here we can see this is 5 divided by 11 into 10 to the power 3 clear so now we can see this is equal to 0 point this is 4 yes we have 6 left and we can see this is 5 we have 5 left and we can say again this is 4 clear and this is 10 to the power 3 and this value we will we are getting in volt clear yes or no so from here we can say value of uh, potential this is given by we can write like this 4.5 clear if we are multiplying with 10 we are dividing with 10 so this is 10 to the power 2 volt clear to you so 4.5 into 10 to the power 2 volt is a potential of the inner sphere 
क्लियर टू एवरी वन यस अनु यस नाउ इफ यू कंपेयर इफ वी टॉक अबाउट पार्ट नंबर सी कंपेयर द कैपेसिटेंस ऑफ दिस कैपेसिटर विथ एन आइसोलेटेड स्पेयर ऑफ रेडियस दिस वन क्लियर सो कैपेसिटेंस वैल्यू इट इज गिवन टू यू एंड नाउ वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट कैपेसिटेंस ऑफ एन आइसोलेटेड कैपेसिटर सो आइसोलेटेड आइसोलेटेड स्पेयर सो आइसोलेटेड स्पेयर वी कैन से कैपेसिटेंस इज गिवन बाई फोर बाई एपसाइल एंड नॉट इन टू आर यस नो सो नाउ वी कैन से हियर बिकॉज दिस इज एन आइसोलेटेड स्पेयर देन वी कैन से वी कैन राइट लाइक दिस वन अपॉन दिस इज नाइन इंटू टेन टू द पावर नाइन एंड मल्टीप्लाइड विद आर आर इज गिवन बाई ट्वेल्व इंटू टेन टू द पावर माइनस Clear to everyone? Yes or no? Yes. So now we can see if we calculate, we can write like this. This is four. This one is three. So this is four by three into ten to the power minus eleven. Clear? And this is parent. Clear? So from here you can write like this. This is one point three three into ten to the power minus eleven parent. Now from here you can observe definitely capacitance of uh, this spherical capacitor is more compared to isolated sphere. Yes or no? Yes. and why this is happening because due to uncharged spherical shell we are actually reducing potential difference when delta v is reducing it means we can say value of c this is increase yes or no because c is given by q by delta v clear to everyone so this is all about this question now dear student we are going to discuss question number 2.31 and in this question we have actually two part here clear so first part is given to you two large conducting sphere carrying charges q1 and q2 are brought close to each other is the magnitude of electrostatic force between them exactly given by q1 q2 upon 4 pi epsilon not r square now dear student we know whenever we apply coulomb's law actually we assume charge is to be point charge clear and when we can say when the size of an object is very small compared to distance between two objects then we can treat that object as a point object and the charge given to that point object is point charge clear so now we can say when distance between these two sphere is decreasing at that time we can say coulomb's law of electrostatics comes into picture clear so now we can say can we apply coulomb's law here no because now we cannot treat sphere as a point charge clear so now we can say we can say here that this statement is wrong clear to you this statement is wrong now if we talk about statement number 2 if coulomb's law involved 1 upon r cube dependence instead of 1 upon r square now we have to find gauss law is still true or not clear so now actually we know according to gauss law we can say finite finite this is given by integral of e dot da yes or no clear now actually we know let's suppose we are assuming a sphere clear let's suppose radius of that sphere is small r clear so we can say we can write like this if we talk about electric field at surface of this sphere we can say this is equal to kq upon r square clear now let's suppose i'm taking here a very small area da and this da vector is also in this direction and let's suppose electric field if we talk about direction of electric field this is also in this direction if we have positive charge on this sphere yes or no so now we can see we can write like this this is da and we have angle between e and d a this is equal to zero yes or no so we can see we can write like this kq 1 upon r square multiply 4 pi r square clear to you yes or no now this is happen when we are saying that electric field is actually varying by 1 upon r square but in this question it is given to you if coulomb's law involved 1 upon r cube at the time we can say here it is given that the electric field of uh, we can say electric field here it is actually going to vary with r cube clear and we can say here we have surface area da so if we add da 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 so we can say this is equal to 4 pi r square clear so now you can write like this if we write here this is r cube and here you can write this is 4 pi r square 
clear from here we can say this one and this one cancel out but important part here we have uh, this is equal to kq and we can say here we are getting value 4 pi by r clear actually if i am writing here integration integration is already over because we have already write here this is 4 pi r square clear so now you can say now you can say if we are talking about net flux net flux is now depending on r clear so now we can say now electric field is varying according to 1 upon r cube we can we can say gauss law is now not valid clear so gauss law is only valid whenever force uh, coulomb's law that is having the inversely relationship with the square of a distance between two point charges clear to everyone yes so this is all about this question now dear student we are going to discuss part number c of 2.31 clear in this question it is given to you a small test charge is released at rest at a point in an electrostatic field configuration will it travel along the field line passing through that point now listen carefully let's suppose here we have a charge and let's suppose we are placing that charge in an electric field clear so let's suppose let's suppose this is a straight line or let's suppose this is electric lines of forces we are placing a charge test charge in an electric field like this so this is e clear now we know when electric field in this direction definitely we can say this charge will move in this direction so we can say at the time a test charge is actually moving in the direction of electric field lines but it is always possible no clear why let's suppose we have electric field lines like this this is zigzag electric field clear now we know if we draw tangent if we draw tangent at any point on these electric field lines definitely it represents the direction of velocity yes or no so actually we can say whenever we are talking about a force this is acting on that charge test charge we can say this electric field line shows only the direction of we can say direction of acceleration clear but direction of acceleration is different from direction of velocity clear to you that's why we can say this statement is also wrong clear a small test charge is released at rest at a point in an electrostatic field configuration will it travel along the field line passing through that point no it is not possible in every situation only in one condition you can say when the particle is moving in a straight line and electric field is also uniform at that find you at that condition you can say this is possible otherwise this is not clear to you yes now if we discuss about <coughs> part number 4 yes so if we talk about part number d what is work done by field of a nucleus in a complete circular orbit of electron clear so actually what is happening let's suppose we can say let's suppose this is circular loop here we have nucleus this is nucleus clear let's suppose here we have electron and this electron is revolving around nucleus clear to you so now we can say electron is going in this direction clear to you okay now we have to find what is work done uh in by what is the work done by electrostatic field on an electron so now we can see here a force of attraction this is acting between a force of attraction acting between nucleus and electron so we can say this is known as electrostatic force clear to you now we know direction of velocity in this direction so now we can say displacement of electron in this uh, direction of a v or we can say electrostatic force is acting along a radius or towards the center it means we can say this electrostatic force it is behaving like a centripetal force clear so now we can say displacement and the force this is acting it is at 90 degree to each other clear so we can say this is equal to 90 degree so if we talk about work done net work done net work done we can say this is fe dot we can say let's suppose displacement is d clear now we know we know here the angle between fe and d this is 90 degree so we can write like this this is equal to fe d cos 90 so whenever path is a circular we can say net work done we have zero yes or no now next part is given to you if what will happen if the orbit becomes elliptical clear so 
when orbit becomes elliptical what will happen so let us try to understand yes let's suppose if uh, uh, we can say let's suppose if the path becomes elliptical like this clear let's suppose here we have nucleus and let's suppose here we have electron so at that time definitely we can say electrostatic force is acting in this direction but at this time displacement of this electron in this direction and we know at every point we are having a different angle between displacement and the force acting yes or no so we can say work done at any point we will not find zero but in a closed loop you always find net work done is zero clear to you so this is the uh, answer this is the explanation of part number d clear to everyone now now we are going to discuss part number e in this uh, part it is given to you electric field is discontinuous across the surface of a charge conductor yes actually we know if we talk about a hollow spherical conductor so inside hollow spherical conductor we can say electric field is zero yes or no but what about outside outside we know this is equal to kq upon r square clear it means we can say on the surface if we talk about point that is inside the surface means we can say radius the value of r is less than capital r clear we always find e equal to zero and outside sphere we can say e uh, e is always kq upon r square it means we can say there is some discontinuity of electric field we will find in a conductor yes or no but what will happen what will happen if we are talking about electric potential so electric potential is always remain constant either we are talking about surface or we are talking about at any point this is inside uh, inside a conductor yes or no so always remember my dear students electric field is zero in a conductor inside inside any conductor electric field is zero but what about potential potential always remains same and this value should be equal to kq by capital r clear to everyone so we can say we will not find any discontinuity regarding electric potential clear to you now now we are going to discuss here part number f what meaning would you give to capacitance of a single conductor now <coughs> if we talk about single conductor single conductor means what let's suppose we have one plate and this is single conductor but we are talking about capacitance so we know for the capacitance we need at least two plates yes or no so we can assume one plate at infinity clear so now we can say whenever it is given to you single conductor it means one plate is situated at this position another plate is situated at infinity clear to you so this is all about this question guess a possible reason why water has a much greater dielectric constant so why water is having much greater dielectric constant actually we know if we talk about structure of a water molecule we know the structure is given by like this it is having six outermost electron and one electron we can see that is shared by uh, hydrogen clear like this so now we can see octet of hydrogen and oxygen both is completed clear so we can say actually we have here a strong bond clear or we can say due to this due to this structure of h2o we can say h2o is having a high dipole moment the value of dipole moment related to h2o molecule is very very large clear that's why we can say the dielectric constant of water is 80 compared uh, we can say the value of dielectric constant is very high compared to dielectric constant of mica clear so this is all about theoretical aspect yes but at least you should know that water is having dielectric constant more why because its dipole moment value is very very high clear to everyone so this is all about this question now dear student we are going to discuss question number 2.32 and in this question it is given to you a cylindrical capacitor has two coaxial cylinder of length 15 centimeter having radius 1.5 centimeter and 1.4 centimeter clear so actually this is a cylindrical capacitor question and our objective in this question is to calculate capacitance of a system so first of all let us try to understand what is the formula of capacitance of 
cylindrical capacitor we know clear so now concentrate on a screen now let's suppose first I am taking here this is a cylinder let's suppose this is cylinder and let's suppose we are assuming length of the cylinder is capital L clear and let's suppose we are taking here a hollow actually we are taking a hollow cylinder or we can say we are taking here two coaxial cylinders so we can draw like this let's suppose here we have inside cylinder like this this one just a minute so we can draw like this this one this is also a coaxial cylinder clear to you this is coaxial cylinder let's suppose this is axis of this cylinder clear okay now we can say radius radius is given to you this value we have let's suppose a and outer radius we have this is b clear our objective here in this question is to calculate capacitance of this cylindrical capacitor for that one i am first drawing a gaussian surface so let's suppose i am drawing here a gaussian surface like this Gaussian surface for cylindrical capacitor is also itself is a cylinder. Clear? So, let's suppose this is a Gaussian surface and let's suppose radius of this cylinder is smaller. Clear to you? Now listen carefully. Now let's suppose I am taking here minus charge, minus Q charge on the in inner cylinder like this. Clear to you? And now we know due to this minus charge here, positive charges are induced on the inner surface of outer cylinder clear now what I am doing here I am doing here earthing clear so now can we find here value of electric field uh, due to this Gaussian surface yes we can write like this E clear we know uh, flux is given by integral of dA yes or no so if we are taking here a small element we can say dA in the direction that is outward perpendicular outward and we can say electric field in this direction yes or no so we can write here e and da da we can say here we are taking radius r so circumference we have 2 pi r and multiply it with l so we can write like this 2 pi r l this should be equal to now charge enclosed by gaussian surface so charge enclosed by gaussian surface we can say this is equal to q enclosed and it is divided by epsilon naught clear to you now let's suppose I am assuming here we have linear charge density lambda clear so linear charge density is given by this is lambda so we can write like this e 2 pi r l and this should be equal to lambda times of l divided by epsilon naught clear we know uh, we have linear charge density lambda if we multiply it with lambda we will find total charge enclosed in a Gaussian surface clear to you so from here you can say l and l is cancelled out so value of e this is given by lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught and it is multiplied with r clear to everyone now our objective here is to find potential difference between these two uh, cylindrical surface clear this one and this one clear so how can we find we can write like this potential difference this is given by uh, integration of from a to b and we can write like this this is e dot dr yes or no now value of e we know this is lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught into r here we have minus also clear so we can write like this minus a to b lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught into r and this is dr clear so value of electric field we have this direction da in this direction or we can say displacement we are taking in right direction so now we can say here we have angle this is cos of 180 clear cos 180 equal to what minus 1 so we can write like this this is equal to a to b lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught r and this value we have this is dr clear so now we can say if we write uh, just a now if we calculate here value of delta v how can we calculate listen carefully yes now we can write like this 
uh, value of delta v this is given by we can take here common lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught into uh, 2 pi epsilon naught this is dr by r and from a to b clear now we know we have integration this is log of r so we can write like this lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught and we can say this is log base e r from a to b clear so from here we can say we can write like this lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught this is log base e and this is b by a clear so we can say this is value of delta v now can we calculate value of capacitance yes how can we calculate capacitance listen carefully yes so from here we can say value of capacitance this is given by c equal to now we can say total charge divided by delta v delta v we have lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught and this is log base e b by a clear now we can say value of charge q value of charge q we can say this is equal to lambda times of l so lambda times of l divided by lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught this is log base e b by a so we can say lambda and lambda this is cancelled out clear so from here we can say we can write like this we can write like this value of c this is given by 2 pi epsilon naught this is log base e b by uh, 2 pi epsilon naught just a minute 2 pi epsilon naught divided by divided by clear we can write like this 2 pi epsilon naught l over log base e b by a so this is value of capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor clear here we are having two coaxial cylinders clear so this is formula now we can apply this formula in this question in this question it is given to you just a minute now we you should keep in mind c equal to what 2 pi epsilon naught l upon log of b by a clear now dear student we are just writing here a formula this formula is given to you c equal to 2 pi epsilon naught l over log base e b by a clear now we can put here values 2 pi epsilon naught if we multiply it with 2 and divide with 2 we can write like this this is 4 pi epsilon naught l divided by we can say 2 log base e b by a clear to everyone yes so now we can write like this 4 pi epsilon naught 4 pi epsilon naught we can say this is equal to 1 upon 9 into 10 to the power 9 and it is multiplied with l l value is given to 15 centimeter so this is 15 into 10 to the power minus 2 divided by clear we can say this is equal to what this is 2 multiply clear we can say this is log base e and b by a b value is given to you 1.5 divided by 1.4 clear to everyone so from here i can say this is equal to 15 by 9 into we can say this is 10 to the power minus 11 and 1 by 2 into log base e 1.5 divided by 1.4 clear now we will try to solve further this uh, mathematic calculation we can say 15 by 9 this is 15 by 9 multiply 10 to the power minus 11 clear and 10 to the power minus 11 and we can say divided by 2 so 1 by 2 into 10 to the power minus 11 and now this is given in terms of e log of e so first we convert into 10 base so 2.303 log base 10 we can say this is 1.5 divided by 1.4 so whenever you are going in an examination if such type of question is coming there is always giving to you a value of log clear to everyone so if you multiply it here 2.303 and this one you will find here 0.03 clear to everyone or you can say if we just write here value of log if we write here value of log then directly we can say log of base 10 this is given by 1.5 divided by 1.4 and this is 0.03 so value of c this is given by 15 upon 9 into 2 into 10 to the power minus 11 1 upon 
2.303 into log base 10. We can say this is 0 0.03. Clear to everyone? Yes or no? So now we can say this is equal to 15 by 18 10 to the power minus 11 and this is 100 by 3 into 1 upon 2.303. Clear to you? Now we can uh, solve here approximate calculation. We can do approximate calculation. This is we can say 5. Approximately you can say this is 2 times. Yes or no? So if you solve it, you will find here approximately 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 10 and value you will get in terms of Farad. Clear? So this is value of capacitance of cylindrical capacitor according to given question. Clear to you? So this is value of capital C. Clear? Now second question is asking to you find the potential of inner cylinder. Clear? So how can we calculate potential? Listen carefully. How can we calculate potential? So if we calculate potential, yes. So if we calculate here potential, directly we can say it is written like this V, this should be equal to Q by C. Clear? We know Q equal to CV. So value of charge, this is given to you uh, here, 3.5 micro coulomb. So 3.5 multiply 10 to the power minus 6 and value of capacitance is given to you 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 10. Clear? So now we can say this is equal to, almost we can say this is equal to 3 times. So 3 into 10 to the power 4 volt. Clear? So we can say this is value of electric potential at the inner surface of a cylinder. Clear to you? Yes. Actually we are taking here one assumption, important assumption that we are neglecting here and effects. Clear? Or what is meaning of and effects? Actually we are neglecting here that the electric field lines is bending at the corners. Yes or no? So at the ends electric field lines are not bending and it means we can say there is an electric field. Electric field we are getting between the, these two coaxial cylinder. Outside cylinder we are not getting any electric field lines. Clear to you? So this is all about this question. Now this turn we are going to discuss question number 2.33 and in this question it is given to you we have a parallel plate capacitor and it is to be designed with a voltage rating of 1 kilo volt. It means uh, we can say maximum permissible voltage maximum permissible maximum permissible voltage this is given to you in this question 1 kilo volt clear 1 kilo volt means we can say this is equal to 10 to the power 3 volt clear everyone okay now it is also given dielectric constant value we have this is 3 okay and dielectric strength is given to you it means the maximum permissible potential difference this is given to you so uh, voltage is given to you 10 to the power 3 you know dielectric strength dielectric strength let's suppose you don't know what is dielectric strength but you can actually recognize from unit unit is given to you volt per meter it means this is a unit of electric field clear so we can write like this electric field is given to you 10 to the power 7 volt per meter clear to everyone yes now for safety we should like the field never to exceed say 10 percent of dielectric strength clear so 10 percent of dielectric strength it means now we can say permissible electric field permissible electric field we can say this is equal to 10 percent of 10 to the power 7 clear so we can say this is equal to what 1 by uh, 10 by 100 into multiply with 10 to the power 7 so we can say this is equal to 10 to the power 6 volt per meter clear to everyone now <clears throat> now we can say what minimum area of plates is required to have a capacitance so actually we know here electric field we know here potential difference clear so can we find here value of separation between parallel plates yes so actually we know one relationship d d is given by v by e clear this is relation between potential difference and electric field potential difference is given to you 10 to the power 3 and divided with e e is given to you 10 to the power 6 clear so from here we can say this is 10 to the power minus 3 meter clear to everyone yes now we have to calculate here value of 
capacity uh, is given to you we have to calculate value of area clear so how can we calculate concentrate here yes now we will try to calculate here value of area so how can we calculate we know capacitance value capacitance this is given by k epsilon naught a by d yes or no because value of dielectric constant is also given to you so we can calculate like this area this is equal to cd upon epsilon naught into k clear value of c capacitance value is given to you 50 picofarad so 50 into 10 to the power minus 12 multiply value of small d so value of d d value is given to you uh, we can say spacing spacing is 10 to the power minus 3 clear and it is divided by epsilon naught epsilon naught value we have 8.85 .8 into 10 to the power minus 12 and it is multiplied with k k is dielectric constant and this value we have 3 clear to you so now from here we can say <coughs> from here we can say if we calculate this value we can easily find value of area so value of area is given by uh, important part is here how can we calculate so 50 multiply 10 to the power minus 15 yes or no and it is divided by 3 into 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 clear everyone so now we can write like this this is equal to 50 upon so if we multiply 8.8 8.85 uh, 8 with 3 so we can say this is 15 we have 1 left so 24 we have 25 we have 2 and we can say this is 27 or we can say 26 clear 26 clear and we can say this is multiplied with 10 to the power minus 12 so this is 10 to the power minus 3 meter square clear approximately you can say this is value equal to uh, if let's suppose here we have 25 we will find it uh, this is to uh, 50 divided by 25 to clear it is given 26 point something so we can say here we will get almost 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter square clear now this time we are going to discuss question number 2.34 and in this question it is given to you you have to draw equipotential surface when it is given to you in part number a a constant electric field acting in a z direction clear so let's suppose i am drawing here let's suppose in this direction we have just a minute yes so let's suppose we have to draw here equipotential surface when electric field constant electric field this is important in z direction so let's suppose i am taking this direction as a z direction and let's suppose i am taking this is an origin let's suppose here we have x direction and this one is y direction clear now let's suppose a constant electric field is acting in positive z direction so now we know electric field is always perpendicular to the equipotential surface clear so now we can say if we draw here equipotential surface it will be like this clear to you so equipotential surface is given by like this this is perpendicular to this z axis or you can say it is parallel to x y plane clear now you can say because electric field is uniform in z direction so we can say here we have equal spacing between these two planes clear so now we can say it means part number a is clear to you so here we can draw equipotential surfaces like this clear now next question a field that uniformly increases in magnitude now electric field is uniformly increasing it is given in question but remains constant in z direction so when the electric field is constant in a z direction it means definitely we will find equipotential surface along the z direction but what will happen because magnitude of electric field is increasing so now we can say here we find uh, equipotential surface in the z direction there is no problem in it okay so now we can see this is z direction so we have to draw elect uh, equipotential surface in perpendicular to this z direction like this but the important part that you can see the separation distance between these equipotential surface uh, decreases as we are going away from origin 
because electric field is increasing yes or no so we can say when value of e is increasing we can say the spacing between these two equipotential surfaces is decreasing clear so like this you can draw here equipotential surface for part number b clear to everyone now now you can see if we talk about single positive charge single positive charge let's suppose if we are taking here plus charge clear now we have to draw here the uh, equipotential surface now equipotential surface means what let's suppose if we find value of v at any distance r you can say this is kq upon r yes or no so now we can see all the points that is lying at the same distance from this charge we can see that they are known as a equipotential they are known as the point on the equipotential surface yes clear it means we can say we can draw here a sphere like this this one we can draw a sphere like this clear so for a positive charge what is shape of a equipotential surface it will be we can say spherical surface clear to you yes now now it is given listen carefully fourth part in the fourth part it is given to you a uniform grid consisting of long equally spaced parallel charge a uh, parallel charge wire in a plane so let's suppose we have a uniform grid clear so if we find equipotential surface near grid lines we can say it is having some curved shape but as we are moving away from grid lines we can say we will find equipotential surface parallel to grids clear same thing is happen that is perpendicular in vertical direction or perpendicular in horizontal direction clear so definitely it's again an information based question so there is no uh, logic behind it yes we can say equipotential surface are the locus of that points if we join all the points uh, that is having the same potential we can say that is known as equipotential surface clear to everyone so this is all about this question number 2.34 now this time we are going to discuss question number 2.35 and in this question it is uh, it is given in a question a small sphere of radius r1 and the charge q1 is enclosed by spherical shell of radius r2 and charge q2 clear so let's suppose here we have uh, let's suppose this is a spherical surface clear and let's suppose we have this spherical surface also clear to everyone yes so now we can say now we can see this is let's suppose radius r1 and charge this is given to you this spherical shell this is q1 clear now let's suppose if we talk about outer surface radius is r2 and charge that is given to this surface this is q2 clear so a small sphere of radius r1 and q1 is enclosed by spherical shell of r2 and charge q2 okay it is given this q1 is positive okay fine q1 is positive and charge will necessarily flow from sphere to shell means we can say uh, if we connect if we connect by a wire so when we connect these two shell uh, actually this is a sphere and it is enclosed by a spherical shell and if we connect both by a wire we have to find charge always flows from sphere 1 to shell number 2 clear so scale uh, so for that one we can say how can we find here that charge is flowing from which side to which side so for that one we have to find here potential at the two surfaces or we can say let's suppose i am taking here this is point number 1 let's suppose this is point number 2 so can we calculate first value of uh, electric potential at point 1 yes we can write like this v1 now listen carefully this one point it lies on the surface of inner sphere so we can say potential can be written like this k this is q1 upon we can say r1 clear to everyone now if we talk about point number 1 uh, with reference to this shell we can say this lies in a uh, inner we can say inner point on this spherical shell now we know inside any spherical shell we always find electric field zero but what about electric potential electric potential always remains constant and that value is equal to we can say equal to the value of, of the electric potential on surface clear so now we can say due to 2 we can write like this here we are getting k q2 
and divide by we can say radius this is r2 clear to everyone yes or no now if you find let's suppose if we calculate potential at 2 now we can say this two point is at outside of this spherical solid sphere so we can write here potential like this k q1 divide by we can say this is r2 clear and if we talk about this uh, spherical shell we can say this is k q2 divide by we can say r2 clear everyone yes so now if we calculate here v1 minus v2 what i am saying to you listen carefully v1 minus v2 now you can say which one is cancelled out directly we can say kq2 upon r2 kq2 upon r2 is cancelled out so we can write like this k this is q1 upon r1 minus k q1 upon r2 clear from here you can say we are taking here common kq1 so we can write like this 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 now you can say which one is greater definitely we can say r2 uh, is greater yes or no yes or no we can say r2 is greater than compared to r1 again you can say how can we write potential potential at 1 is given by kq1 upon r1 yes or no and for that one we can say kq2 upon r2 clear for v2 we can write this is kq1 upon r2 and for kq2 upon r2 so if we subtract we can write like this v1 minus v2 this is given by kq by r1 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 definitely we can say value of r2 is more value of r2 is more compared to r1 clear so definitely we will find this factor we are getting positive yes or no now in this question it is given to you value of q1 value of q1 this is also given positive so now we can say no matter what is charge present on spherical shell clear either here we have positive charge or negative charge we are not getting any term of q2 in potential difference clear and this potential difference according to this question q1 is positive this term is positive it means we can say v1 minus v2 value we are getting positive clear so directly you can say v1 is greater than v2 it means we can say point number one is at higher potential compared to point number two so charge always flows from point number one to point number two clear to everyone so we can say charge always flows from uh, outer surface of inner outer surface of inner sphere to we can say on an spherical shell clear to everyone so this is all about this question now this time we are going to discuss question number 2.36 and in this question it is given to you you have to give answer of the following questions number a question is given to you the top of atmosphere is at about 400 kilo volt with respect to surface of the earth fine corresponding to an electric field that decreases with altitude near the surface of earth the field is about 100 volt per meter okay fine why do we not get an electric shock as we step out of our house into open air clear now listen carefully actually what is the given situation situation is given to you top of atmosphere is at 400 kilo volt with respect to surface of a earth okay fine and at we can say near the surface of earth we are having electric field 100 volt per meter clear so let's suppose if we talk about let's suppose this is ground and if we talk about equipotential surface equipotential surfaces are always parallel to ground clear it is given here that electric field is actually decreasing as altitude is decreasing so let's suppose if you are assuming electric field is vertical we can say these equipotential surfaces are perpendicular to this electric field clear to everyone now important part is here why whenever we have electric field such much such much amount 100 volt per meter then why we are not getting electric shock when we are coming out of our house so actually what is happening listen carefully <coughs> actually we can say our body is a good conductor clear so as we come outside of our house we can say equipotential surface becomes like this yes or no so we can say equipotential surface become like this so actually we can say if we talk about potential difference uh, between these two points our head and our leg we will find a very negligible or almost zero potential difference between these two points clear so whenever we have no potential difference we can say the charge cannot be flow 
yes or no and it means we can say we will not find any electric shock clear everyone so this is answer of this question number a clear to everyone yes now if we talk about a man fixed outside uh, a man fixes outside his house one evening a 2 meter high insulating slab carrying on its top a large aluminum sheet of area 1 meter square okay actually what is happening let's suppose this is ground let's suppose this is ground clear a man fix outside his house a 2 meter high insulating slab let's suppose here we have this is 2 meter 2 meter high insulating slab clear a person is doing what an aluminum strip is actually fixed at this position clear and let's suppose this is a person now what is happening if next morning that person touches the aluminum strip it will gain some electric shock or not so according to me definitely you can assume this situation like this here we have a metal plate we are inserting a dielectric between two parallel plates and you can assume this ground is also having a parallel plate like this yes or no it means we can say this becomes a parallel plate capacitor having a dielectric slab between these two parallel plates clear to you yes so now if we in the next morning if we say this person is touching this aluminum sheet so definitely this will get uh, an electric shock why because we can say from evening to morning definitely some charge that is stored in this capacitor according to the capacity of this capacitor clear so as uh, as the charge is stored in a capacitor we can say as this person touches this sheet definitely he will get some electric shock clear so we can say this statement is correct and this one we have already talking about clear to you so this is part number a and part number b of this question question number 2.36 now dear student we are going to discuss part number c of question number 2.36 in this question it is given to you the discharging current in the atmosphere due to small conducting of air is known to be 1800 ampere on an average over the globe fine why does the atmosphere no, not discharge itself completely in this course and becomes electrically neutral clear a very interesting question we have whenever we are saying that atmosphere is discharging a current that is 1800 ampere so from where atmosphere is getting some charge actually we know on our earth we have a different different places at some places we are having thunderstorm at some places we are getting lightning so actually the equilibrium of atmosphere is maintained by this uh, we can say by these electric uh, light we can say lightning clear so some equilibrium in electric charges is maintained by lightning thunderstorm and so on clear so we can say if at one point earth is actually discharging some uh, charges or we can say discharging some current so we can say at the same time on other place the atmosphere is getting charged and we can say equilibrium of this system is maintained clear to you so i think this question is clear to you clear now dear student we are going to discuss question number 2.36 part number d in this question it is given what are the form of energy into which the electric energy of atmosphere is dissipated during lightning actually now we know during lightning the electric energy of we can say electric energy of the atmosphere is dissipated in the form of we can say light energy it can dissipate in the form of heat energy it can dissipate in a form of sound energy clear so very simple question we have clear now it is given the earth hint is also given to you in this question earth has an electric field of about 100 volt per meter at its surface in downward direction fine corresponding to a surface charge density this is given to you on earth minus 10 to the power minus 9 coulomb per meter square okay due to slight conductivity of atmosphere up to about 50 kilometer beyond which it is good conductor about 1800 coulomb is pumped every second into earth as a whole fine the earth however does not get discharged since thunderstorm and lightning occurring continually all over globe clear so that actually hint is uh, useful for part number c clear but 
you should keep in mind what is solution of this question the energy that is dissipating in the form of uh, we can say heat energy in the form of light energy in the form of sound energy clear to everyone so this is all about this question